Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Okay. Uh, just taking a short break from the main game of space exploration to do a little, uh, sandbox experimentation here. Uh, this is the steamship that we played with not too long ago, but it's got problems with water output. I think, I suspect if we do the same thing, but with three condenser turbines, uh, it's actually going to be okay. Um, but that's not what I want to test right now. Let's get this thing back to Nalvis orbit. And I want to play with some antimatter ships at the tech level that we've got in space exploration for now. Uh, did we stop? We stopped. Okay. Let's uh, do something about that. If I just delete this and put it back. No. What about this? Just need to get rid of some of that water. There we go. Alright, back to normal speed. And... Anchor to Nalvis Orbit? I guess we just didn't put in the clamp IDs for this one. Uh, I think it goes here. It does not. Let's try that again. Anchor here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so here I was attempting to design some ships for a future playthrough that have a standardized uh, refueling area. But we're going to design something with antimatter in any case. So we won't necessarily be sticking with that. Do we have the robo coverage here? Yeah, we do. Alright, let's go for a whole lot of spaceship floor first. Uh, and what I want to design right now is a player ship with antimatter engines. Probably a couple of antimatter engines. Partly for the massive speed, partly because they only take one megawatt each, and partly, honestly, because that's the only way we get some symmetry. Um, where's our console? Maybe here? I'm sure we're going to move this further up. Um, thinking about power options... Pretty much every power option boils down to being either a solar panel or a turbine. Um, there really isn't anything else. Unless we want to go for steam engines. 900 kilowatts each. It's actually not that bad. Wait. There's no way we're actually considering this, right? Uh, we need two of these for every one of these. No, it, we need to recycle. Wait, doesn't the condenser turbine... It does... It does generate power at 165 degrees steam. I never actually thought of trying this before. I probably won't, but I'm curious... Uh, condenser turbine, that goes the other way around, actually. So, 60 steam per second, and this can consume 80. We actually get... Okay, this is kind of crazy. Comparing it to the steam engine? I mean, it is later game tech, but still. Um... It takes two steam engines and we get 1.8 megawatts to consume 60 steam per second here. Uh, this thing can consume 80 steam per second, and it would get the same amount of power. 
except 99% of the water comes back. But we won't actually get 1.8 megawatts uh, if we do this ratio because we're not producing enough steam to keep up. What would be the smallest number for a uh, common denominator here? Um, 80 to 60. Uh, Eighty to sixty. Well, what's six sixty by eighty? Surely we can do better than four thousand eight hundred, right? Uh, let's see. Sixty, hundred and twenty, hundred and eighty, two forty. Um. Yeah, there we go. Two forty. I can't remember the proper way to calculate the lowest common denominator, but. If we go for uh, four, 4 to 3, we can get a perfect ratio. Although it's not gonna... It's probably not gonna be terribly symmetrical. We can't quite reach under here with an underground. So how much power would this give us? Uh, 1.8... Max consumption, 1.8 megawatts of fuel? Oh, right, because we get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if we were to have four boilers, three condenser turbines, we could have a whopping... Uh, 5.4 megawatts of power, which is a couple of spaceship antimatter engines and, like, a laser turret... Not even that, really. So I think this... Uh, n n not To no one's surprise, this would end up taking up more space for the amount of power that we want. But it is surprisingly viable. Okay. So we're looking at uh, heat exchangers and condenser turbines. Um... The other, the other option, of course, is high temp heat exchanger. For that, we don't have the antimatter reactor yet. Um, I'm curious, what actually goes into the antimatter reactor? Like, does it spit out? Uh, does it spit out an empty canister when it's done? Uh, let me just this into my inventory. Uh, what? Canister. Antimatter canister. Let's speed this up a little bit. Wait, that is... Hold on. Normal speed. That is being consumed surprisingly quickly. And it's not even going to reach 5,000 degrees on one antimatter fuel. Interesting. It does spit out a magnetic canister. Okay, good to know. Um, unfortunately, we can't read uh, how hot these things are. So we either would need to read... Uh, a tank full of steam or an accumulator to figure out if we're going to try and consume uh, fuel. Antimatter canister, let's see. Wait, no, I just want to know what it takes. It is 1000 antimatter stream. So, judging from what we just saw here, Unless, unlike nuclear power, it actually... Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Canister. Unless, unlike nuclear power, it actually conserves fuel automatically. 
uh, this thing's actually going to go through a ridiculous amount of antimatter really, really quickly, as compared to the antimatter engines themselves. Crazy Heather, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's speed this up. I'm curious to see how that works. I guess technically I am peeking ahead just a little bit, but it's fine. I'm pretty sure it's just going to consume fuel, uh, even when the heat is full. If it doesn't, that's a whole other story. Yeah, no. So that's... That is... That is ticking down, uh, 1,000 antimatter for each bar here. That's a lot. Kind of. Alright. Um, so I probably will try and... The only trouble with implementing some fuel-saving measures... Uh... Well, if I read it based on how much hot steam we have stored, maybe not so much. But if I read it based off of accumulator charge, we basically have to wait until we have power problems um, before we put more antimatter fuel in. Uh, but the thing is, these antimatter engines actually only take one-tenth the power uh, that ion engines require. So, weirdly enough, uh, weirdly enough, we're actually good to run these off of nuclear power. And there's pretty much no other choice. Um, solar panels are effectively useless in deep space. We don't have antimatter yet anyway. And I'm, I'm wanting to build a ship that doesn't have a giant um, energy beam receiver on it for the player ship. Um, so it pretty much has to be nuclear power. Even though we don't need that much power here. Uh, so we can go for something like this, or maybe use some heat pipe. How much do we need? I want to know, I want to experiment and find out if we have two antimatter engines and a small-ish ship, uh, exactly how much power do we need to support the laser turrets and or um, shield projectors? Uh, that we're going to need to protect the ship. I use the turrets. Um, and I do want... The shield projectors actually consume a ton of power, even though... that They consume one megawatt minimum. It's a little bit misleading looking at it here. It says maximum minimum consumption is one megawatt. Uh, but we found yesterday that it actually consumes a huge spike of energy. The lower the hit points of the shields get... Let's throw down some power here just to demonstrate. Uh, so it throws out this shield, asteroids slam into it, loses hit points, and it regenerates hit points. The... It costs one megawatt just to keep this here. But once, uh, once something actually hits it, uh, it has a big spike of power consumption, and then it sort of curves downward rapidly. But the more hit points it's regenerating, the more power it consumes. Uh, I think it regenerates faster the lower in health it is. So until we have... Uh, like antimatter reactors, probably. Uh, I mean, we could also do it with high temp with energy beam receivers, but until we have ludicrous power on the ship, 
I think I want the shield projector to be plan B, basically. Hey, Hughes Mike. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I wonder if... I think... Hmm. How, how lengthy could I make this ship? I know we need at least... Let me just get the laser damage to the level that we need. Um, I need to have the editor mode up, go into research queue, and we're going for laser uh, damage, energy damage. Energy weapon damage 11, unresearch, uh, 10, oh, yeah, we just unresearched 10, that's actually perfect, because this uh, tier 9 is what we've got in our game. It can make a pretty massive difference to um, shooting down the asteroids if we have the wrong research level. So I think we needed, like, what, six laser turrets, not including the shield projector? Uh, with our... with our test before. Although, of course, they weren't firing continuously. But let's pretend... Let's pretend four of these will be firing continuously, and we'll sort of ignore the spikes of power consumption from the shield projector. Call it 4 megawatts each for the laser turrets, that's 12, 13, 14, 15 megawatt. So we actually would only need a couple of condenser turbines. Um, I suspect in reality we will need more than that. 5.82 megawatts times 2 is 11.64. We're a bit short, actually. Even by that estimate. Um, we really only need the second nuclear reactor here for two reasons. Uh, symmetry and fuel efficiency. Although I may even consider having just one if... Uh, the container stress cost is actually relevant, but I don't think it will be. That is working with the assumption that um, it just goes by whichever number is smaller, hull stress, uh, larger rather, hull stress or container stress, but that might not be true. So I think we'll probably end up with four condenser turbines. Uh, I think four of these heat exchangers can support five of them, actually, but there's no way to make that symmetrical. 103 times 4. 4, 12 divided by 80. Yeah, we can support five with this. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we could maybe do something like this. I don't think I want to go with that design, though. Um, let's try... Down the middle. And throw in some heat pipe. And then... Condense it turbine like so maybe let's make the ship a bit wider which means if we're going to use shield projectors we should probably have a couple we can probably live with that I didn't want to turn that on and off if I do that they're not covering the front Hmm. 
if I put them a little bit further apart, they could cover the front and the sides. Uh, where did they go? Here we are. Like, even one tile. Could probably do that. Uh, pylon substation. Yeah, that might be good. So, lasers get to try to shoot things down first. These will be a bit further back. Uh, we will be needing some water storage. Maybe here this time. I wanted to put this, squeeze this in here, but if those are linked, that won't work. Uh, we could fit quite a lot of water storage. It's not really necessary. We'll have a look at what the container stress looks like. I'm pretty sure a storage tank isn't that big of a deal, actually. Um... Alright, let's just draw around this so that we can start doing integrity checks, because I want to see... Uh, what kind of numbers we have here. So, container stress 50. Really? 12.5 is what a 25,000 storage tank costs. That is... practically... Practically nothing. A couple of antimatter engines, that's 50k each. Uh, so that is... we went from 100k to 200k. That should double from 50. No, it's 75,000. What? Did I miss something? What are we at with... These four? 50. And then we add this one. That's 12.5. It's the same as these storage tanks, even though we get twice as much antimatter. Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so... We could have... Whoops. I want to minimize the profile of this ship. So maybe like this. And then... Uh, I'm sure we're going to use up more space than this, but just tentatively. stress look like? Less than 500. I want to aim for less than 500 for the whole thing if I can. Get the most speed out of the least ship. So we might need more laser turrets. Um, the shield projectors... The nuclear reactors are kind of in the way. I want... hmm, this is actually pretty close to the perfect spot already, though. I don't know, would this still be streamlined? N not quite. Huh. Okay. Alright, so this is already pretty close to being in the perfect spot to be the last resort. Uh, only the occasional sideward drifting rock could be a threat here, but I'm not really too worried about that. 
Actually, I could put these, like, here. That might be good. That's weird. The shield is still there, even though it's got no power. Pylon substation. What is this connected to? Get out of there. Throw in some infinite power source for now. Okay, that's actually more what I'm looking for. Yeah, I like this. You can rotate the shield. I know. It just It's a big uh, 45 degree increment and I haven't really got it. Hold on. I haven't really got it where I want. Maybe like this? Is it gonna... Hmm... Does it actually cover the middle if I do this? I'm thinking theoretically an asteroid can slip through the middle. Glowing eyebrows. <laughs> Indeed. Um... Glowing eyebrows. <laughs> yes. I want to see if uh, anything can slip through the middle. Because if not, I kind of like the look of this. And then... We can use up less of this space here. Um, we could even still have some room for some lasers there if necessary. How about... Something like this. That looks kind of weird, actually. What's the most consistent step here? It's pretty close. Get rid of this on this side. Copy, paste, and we can't flip. Sure, we get that the same. I kind of like the look of that. Uh, we probably could bring these a bit closer as well. We could have water resupply like so. Antimatter resupply. I think I think I want to double the antimatter fuel supply. So something like that. And then we could also have a nice, neat resupply on the outside. That looks decent. And then, unfortunately, if I do it this way, we can't actually bring all of this up one tile. Because it's going to connect the antimatter booster tanks to the water. Um, also, also, I, I forget this every time, but we're lucky this time. I should have put the clamps in before we got started. I think I like this position best. Uh, but then, water resupply. We could just do it like this. And we can put that wherever we want. You can put both shields on one spot outwards, then there is no gap. Both shields on one spot outwards. Oh. Yeah. I think I like that even better. And there's a nice gap for the player to stand in as well. I... hmm... I would like to have at least one solar panel, just so we're not consuming fuel when we're sitting idle in the system. Tada, indeed. There's nowhere to put it. No. I could put a couple here, I guess. Uh, tier 3 solar. 
And how's the ship gonna look if I do that? I think it's gonna wreck the the shape of the front of it. There isn't a universe where we can push these over one more tile, is there? And have our solar panel in the middle? Pretty much. The shields aren't going to cover the very edges if we do that, though. Um... Hmm. No, I, I really prefer this layout for the look of the shields and everything. Let me undo a few things so I can get back the exact shape we had before. Yeah, I like that. That just still leaves the question of where can we smuggle in a solar panel. I could put it back here if I don't mind having less anti ma Wait, no I can't. That doesn't connect anymore. It feels weird having the solar panel back there anyway. Um, we would need four chests if we're going to have this fully automated. Which, unfortunately, is going to add a lot of container stress. Um, let's put this here. And I might put that there, actually. Anyway, the point is container stress goes up to 196. I don't... Can we, like, look this up? I want to find out. I think I tried to look this up before. Uh, space exploration ship weight. I want to know... Is the gap between container stress and hull stress here completely irrelevant? Or is the ship actually lighter because this is... Like, if we had 417.6 container stress, would the ship be exactly as heavy? Um, because we're very strongly incentivized to shove in a few more chests here. Also, we don't have to worry about the few chests to supply the nuclear fuel. Depending on the answer to that. Uh, space Exploration Mod Factorio Ship Weight. The tip a bit longer and the lasers in front back, next to the console. The tip a bit... oh, for the solar panel? That might work. Uh, it would have to be that much longer though. I think we're gonna... oh, I can't put this here. Rip. At least it tells you. Wait. Is there like a hacky way to do this? Don't tell me. Yeah, there is. It doesn't let us place walls where there's a shield, but we can just... We can literally just switch them off um, momentarily. So I guess it's actually spawning a structure? Is how that works? At least without the combat mechanics overhaul mod? Or maybe it does that anyway with the combat mechanics overhaul mod because it needs enemies to collide into it. Uh, space exploration, Factorio mods. Yeah, I don't... Hmm. Are we still streamlined? That, that's going to affect my decision. 
What if we go here? 95.5 still. Oh, it's because this part's too... Not pointy enough. It's not actually because of this. I still think that's about the best shape. Uh, integrity check. Streamline 100. I actually don't mind this. Yeah, that's actually... It's actually not bad. What should go in here? I mean, we could jam in a couple of accumulators, but... Feels a bit weird. Right behind the captain's seat. Also, I would rather just put them here. We could technically make the ship slightly smaller as well. 425. I don't think that's worth. Uh, spaceship. I don't think I'm finding the nitty gritty stats on this in here. Let's look in the Informatron, although I don't. I have read every line of text of this before. I don't think we're going to find it in here. Okay. Um, I could put more lasers here if I want to. Or need to. Might do that, actually. It looks kind of weird, but I don't hate it. Let's take this thing for a spin. And we'll do the usual. Well, if I had somewhere to store steam, I could... I could be a bit more proactive about how we do our fuel management. So we don't wait until we're low on energy. Um, but unfortunately the smallest fluid container that lets us read the contents is 3x3. Three three. So that's sort of out of the question. So if the total stress is the greater of the hull or container stress, that's my guess, but I don't know that for a fact. I guess we could do an experiment. That's one way we can find out. Let's do that right now. Alright, so we're looking for uranium fuel cells, and that's not what I meant to do, but that's okay. The Informatron said so? Uh, integrity stress. You'll be very limited as per... Da, da, da. The total integrity stress is whichever stress factor is larger. The two values are not added together. If your structural stress... Yeah, but does that affect the ship speed in the exact same way as just whichever number is bigger? We're gonna find out. The whole stress bar shows three values. Up to 10%, so ship size does not count towards integrity if it is empty spaceship tiles. Okay. Clear space is discounted in the stress calculation. Exceptionally long, thin ships are less sturdy. Wide ships are sturdy, but must clear more asteroids. Some structures have special effects on ship integrity or speed. Huh. Can you hover over that whole stress bar? Oh, like to get some text to pop up? Whole stress estimate of all tiles are occupied is 480. 
yeah, it doesn't really tell us that much. Making big ships, I see. Uh, I want to make, like, the smallest, fast, antimatter player ship that'll go anywhere that I can. For our current tech level, actually. Um, I won't worry about the fuel preserving wiring or anything like that just yet. Uh, let's get rid of all of this spaceship floor. Oh, I actually managed to remove it from underneath this, uh... That looks kind of weird, actually. Can we keep it there? Is that legal? Actually, I'm curious. Is that the same hull stress? 436. And then... 436. Wait, did it just get rid of... No, no, I just got rid of it. Dope. Alright, let's remove all of this this, and this, and th this, and these ones, and so on. And then, over here, don't have any pieces sticking out, fantastic. Alright, now we need some scaffolding floor. How about this? Goes there, that goes there. Uh, floor go this way. give this some random number, and that's going to be our clamp target for when we come back. Clamp, triple nine to triple nine. Uh, and let's throw in some infinity pipe. Wait, actually, we need to limit it for the water. Where's my pump? There we go. Water. Less than 24.5k. Actually, that's reading from the tank that's slightly further away from that pump, so let's do this. Water, anti mapped stream. Mm -mm. Takes a moment to fill up. Should have done that sooner. Okay, I don't think we need this, do we? Can you start and land from a planet with antimatter? Yes, indeed. HP Crusher, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Will it be safe having the shields so close to the front of the ship? Yeah, the shields are there as a backup. Um, I'll try using shields as the primary way of removing asteroids later on when we've got more power. Uh, but for this build, I want the shields to be the last resort instead. Um, because they spike the power like crazy. Um, and if we've got like... I, I think they should be either way up the front or significantly behind. Because 
if the lasers almost kill an asteroid and then the asteroid hits the shield, I don't think we get a discount on how much damage it does, right? Uh, so it's going to cost even more energy to remove the same asteroid if the lasers fire and then fail to kill it and then the shield does its thing. So these shields are basically just here for the few asteroids that might get past uh, la the right number of lasers that would be the minimum for the Mac to to support this ship at max speed. That's the plan anyway. Um, so yeah, let's give this thing a go. I could just leave that there f for testing, but there's no need. Alright, where should we aim for? Uh, how about... Well, antimatter's really fast, so... Let's just aim for, like, Star Corps, and we'll go through some thick asteroid belts. This is in Creative World for testing, yes indeed. That's why we've got infinite resources and such. Let me just confirm... Laser, I mean energy weapon damage. Uh, we're on tier 9 right now. Um, so that's the same as we've got in our game. I want to see if 4 laser turrets is sufficient as well, although I have my doubts. Let's go. And engage. Speed. Jeez, that's fast. We're already at 80, 90, 100, 110. And it looks like... I don't think four lasers are going to keep up. But are they going to keep up enough of the time that the shields can pick up the slack, I wonder? I kind of like this uh, energy bow here. We're at 163. What was our top speed in that other little ship that we made? I think it was like 260. With two antimatter engines and just a solar panel and a couple of lasers. Well, a few lasers. 164. And the speed is drastically... the acceleration is drastically slowed down. Let me just make sure I don't have... oh. Yeah, no laser turrets. Uh, no personal lasers. That is... cheating. So I've already seen the shields activate just briefly. Let me just check something. We're on one time speed, right? Yeah, we are. Uh, 164 speed. I don't mind that at all. I think this will probably be our player ship. Uh, it depends on... Well, no, if anything, we might just have to slow down a little bit to go through thick asteroids. I'm surprised this, uh, this Nalvis, uh, Calidus solar system apparently doesn't have asteroid belts. I thought it was here, but surely, well, maybe I just have to discover it, right? Let's go satellite rocket silo. Uh... Infinity chest, inserter, and we have to add a satellite, auto launch, wait, why is it, oh, item ingredient shortage, I beg to differ, what's happening here, 
Oh, it's set to whitelist. There we go. Uh, I wonder if I have to launch um, satellite rocket silos as opposed to, like, zone discovery to find the local asteroid belts. More faster, indeed. So it looks like uh, at normal asteroid density, this is totally fine. How's our power? Oh, we've got lots of power. Well, okay, it's only 4.2 megawatts idle. Um, not idle, but the engines are going and we're not firing the lasers or anything. Uh, maximum is 23 megawatts. Oh, that's with the solar panel, though. Uh, so our real maximum in deep space is 5.82 times 4, 23.28 megawatts. Yeah, that's actually what it's showing here. Um, we're barely ever dipping into the accumulator charge. I wish we could read when the engines are active. So what's our speed? 164. That's pretty good actually. Wait, I just heard bots. The wall took damage. Uh, let me turn off my robots. Did an asteroid that hit here actually damage the wall, even though the energy shield tanked it? Yeah, I think we, I think this is too far forward. Um, hmm, I could ruin the streamline. And maybe the asteroids couldn't hit the wall like this. And if that's the case... I mean... Wait, we're still 100%? Really? Okay. Maybe we'll just go with this. 100% streamline. You can also find them in the star map. Oh, I was gonna launch... Um, I was gonna launch... We already did launch, I think. Asteroid. Uh, a satellite. Yeah, I think there's just no um, asteroid belts in this system. It's weird. Uh, can we module insert this? Satellite rocket silo, tier 9 speed, and go. I said go. Fantastic. Two fluids in, two fluids out. That's what making antimatter stream is all about, indeed. Maybe unrelated, can you read speed? Uh, yes. Uh, I can read current speed from here. So... I'm just thinking about ways that I could do the fuel conservation thing, but also make sure that it's never gonna go down to... make sure that it's, the heat isn't ever gonna drop low enough that the accumulators start dropping. I think that's because you are 
in mid-flight before it was 95.5? What was 95.5? Oh, the um, streamline? Yeah, but uh, I mean, if I add a container here, it's going to recalculate container stress. Yeah, it does. Alright, um, what's our density? 100, where are we? Oh! We're already all the way up. Jeez, that's fast. Okay, um, we need to go through some dense asteroids. Let's go, let's head towards Stargus. Or was it Sargus? Sargus. I heard bots again. I should really turn off my robo-port so I can see uh, which which parts of the ship are getting damaged. I'm sure we're going to need a couple more lasers at least for the denser asteroids anyway. But I'm a little disappointed if asteroids are able to hit the wall, even though they damage the shield here. Can we speed this up? Editor, and go. Oh, there we go. That's what we're looking for. We're not wanting to see it, but that's what we're looking for. Okay. Um, let's stop. It actually takes a while to stop. I'm thinking if I... Oh, I actually need to... No, we're fine. Maybe if I move this over here... Wait, doesn't that make it worse? Let's put it in the middle. I wonder if the asteroids would never get through that gap. Um, we could fit a lot more laser turret as well. And I guess we could still have the solar panel up the front. Anything else I want to change before we start again? Don't think so. Oh, um, actually, we may be... No, I think... Because I might want to end up putting eight lasers on this. Let's just stick with that for now. No, uh, let's... Let's, let's keep... Let's keep the ship looking decent, if we can. How about there? Something like that, maybe. I like that better. Alright, let's see how this goes. So we still have a 100% streamline. And let's see how fast it goes before it starts taking damage. Uh, we're already at triple asteroid density. Wait, we're halfway through it already. Jeez.
We need to go full speed through the maximum asteroid density, though. Oh, it's still... It still hits the wall here. That's really unfortunate. I can't move this forward a tile, no. Hmm. I'm really surprised about that, actually. I don't think the... Um, I don't think the asteroids are slipping through this gap, but... Let's turn around and go to stone circles. Oops. And speed things up a tad. Yeah, I don't... Oh. I think it did slip through there. If you were prepared to make it wider at the front, maybe have the control panel below the shields. Have more distance between the shield and nose. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or maybe... Maybe if the console and flat solar panel were not in the middle, they could be back here. some lasers wherever we like. Uh, remove this constant combinator. I can actually fit... I could make this a little more streamlined looking as well. Take up a little less space. Streamline 100%. 428 hole. All lasers at the front. We could do two more here. Uh, we could do four more here if we want to change the shape just a little bit. Doesn't give the lasers as much time to shoot down asteroids before the shields take damage. So we don't get as much of the benefit of less overall power consumption that I would have liked. You have added lasers not? Wait, what? Avario? Welcome, welcome. I could be doing well. Yeah, if we had more space in the ship overall, I think I would put this about here, actually. Um, but I want to keep this ship about as small as I can. Ignore? Oh, okay. No worries. Alright, where are we? Oblong. Hey, it's Oblong. Alright, let's aim for stone circles so that we spend some time going through maximum density asteroids. This thing is almost too fast to easily test properly. I need a line of asteroid fields. Probably from stone circles to angulus would be good. Uh, 
that seems to be working pretty well, actually. Oh, we're only at 100 density now. Where are we? Heading back into Asteroidia in a few seconds. For the triple dance asteroids. Let me just check I don't have personal lasers. Here we go. Oh, did I see a rock just squeeze through there? I hope not. Wait, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh no. What's our power look like? You can see very clearly which one's the shield projector from that shape right there, from recharging. Are bots on? Only when I turn them on with my personal RoboPod. If you hear the sound of robots repairing something, you know that something got through. What's the purpose of this vessel, uh, Ninja Ducks? We are making a... Uh, pretty much a player ship with our newly discovered antimatter, uh, but I want it to be, like, fairly small but also fast. So with those constraints we've ended up going with a uh, nuclear reactor, four condenser turbines, two... You know what? With the shape of this... Maybe I should go for quad antimatter engines. What do you guys think? Quad antimatter engines? It's gonna be inconvenient with the shape of the booster tanks. Yes to it. <laughs> All caps. You can stack engines, so go for more. Stack engines. What's our speed? 165. We've only got four lasers, we can easily fit two to four more back here. Uh, what's our asteroid density? 300. Oh, we got some damage in the middle. Okay, let's stop this for a second. I want to see if it would be better if a little unfortunate if we face these straight forward. I think we might end up having some asteroids hit the sides if I do that. I could be wrong. Let's repair this. As in, they can go directly behind, needs a gap for space like this, but then you lose efficiency from the engines, right? I really wish I could rotate this uh, less than 45 degrees. Or maybe... Okay, hear me out. Let's put this down one time. Maybe like this. Yeah, I, I like the look of that best as well. This is probably still going to be streamlined. I hope. Streamline 100%. Uh, weirdly enough. It looks a little bit too boxy on the front for my tastes. Actually, yeah, the whole front of it sort of sticks out now. Why don't we make room for a couple of laser turrets there? maybe? Yeah, that's pretty good. So with this layout, we could fit... Is this hole still...? Yeah. 
we could fit up to eight, nine, ten lasers turrets. Um, but I want to see at these speeds if the shield coverage is actually correct. Can we go fast through maximum density asteroids? Let's turn it around and go to Angulus in a second. Once it speeds up and then we turn around instantaneously without losing any speed. Turn off my personal roboports. I really like the look of that energy plow at the front. So, how much energy did that just cost us? About this much. It's a few laser shots, to say the least. It's probably... yeah, it's probably cheaper to make sure we shoot them down first with the lasers. Oh, and we were going to turn around, weren't we? Angulus. Alright, so... In a few seconds we'll be... there again. Asteroid density... Go burr. It looks like this is working. We're not actually... We're occasionally dipping into the accumulator. Yeah, that's actually really good. Burr, indeed. Ship do go burr. Wait, did we just arrive at Angulus already? Uh, I mean, I did speed up the... No? We've stopped. Why did we stop? Why did we stop? No tiles found connected. Did we lose a... Did we lose a bit of wall? Oh, it's way back here. Okay, I was a little bit afraid of that. Okay, but I think... I think I would like to see if we can manage more engines anyway. Um, so first of all, we need some more floor. Uh, I guess we'll just have to... I really hate the way these two don't line up. I wonder if I can... I can't pick a dollies. Hmm. I suppose this makes sense. Quadra engines. But then we can't like neatly fit any more in the middle here. Sad symmetry noises. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 we're not ready. Actually, I think we're out of fuel anyway. Uh, so let's get some more fuel. And... Maybe while I'm at it, repositioning these, I could have... made it so that... Nope, either way it's gonna line up with one of those pipes if I put these together like so. If I put it over here... 
One, two, three, that still doesn't work. So I guess we're just going to have to do it like this. Oh, and you know what? Then we can have a flat solar panel. It still feels kind of weird to put it at the back, but I don't mind that much. Console can be snugly in the middle. Um, maybe we could even put this two tiles back. just far enough back, uh, just far enough forward that we're not going to have asteroids damaging the walls. We will need some lasers back here, if only to get the occasional um, small rock that would hit from the side. But I think that's okay. I could even put that back there, maybe. We can fit all of the laser turrets. If we so desire. The, qu the, the thing is, it's not going to... it's going to be too much power. But if we're going really, really fast, I don't mind if the bottleneck is power, if the result is we're going really, really fast. Um, we'll trim the number of laser turrets we have until we reach something a bit more optimized. You might as well have a row of four lasers as a secondary line, just extra power. Yeah, just extra power. I could always... Uh, 40 megawatts. Just one nuclear reactor without a neighbor bonus is actually enough for four heat exchangers. Um, I could always have as many as eight if I'm okay with making this longer. And if making it eight tiles longer when it's already got to be about this big is the difference between getting around fast and obscenely fast. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Have room for some lasers here as well, just in case. Okay, this space here feels a bit weird now. Originally... We could do this. I don't think we're going to be needing that many lasers. That looks a little bit stubbly on the end now, though. I don't mind this. It looks like a bullet, actually. Well, I guess we've got two solar panels now. I can live with that. Maybe the console can go further up the front. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, where are we? Asteroidia. Let's aim for Angulus. Engage. Oh my goodness. What have I done? My brains are going into my feet. A hundred and two hundred fuel? Oh yeah, well we've got some already.
so we do need the energy shields. We are going through maximum density 230, nice. More faster, indeed. Uh, this might actually be really good. Oh, what's our power look like? We're still just barely dipping into the accumulator charge sometimes. Uh, we did just hit regular space, though. Overdrive, indeed. 235. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, we can't really have the antimatter fuel connected on both sides, but we don't really need to. I feel like I need some sound effects. Like a sports car or something. It feels weird that just four condenser turbines can support all of this. Pew pew pew, indeed. Yeah, so that's our speed, 235. And we are going through triple dense asteroids right now. We're halfway through Oblong, actually. And it doesn't look like we're likely to take that. Let me turn off my roboport. Just in case while we're looking on the map, we take damage and I don't hear the bots doing anything. You know, I thought I would be jumping into the editor to speed this up for testing. But it's so fast, it's hardly even necessary. Let's aim at Kalmea? Kalmea. As soon as we reach the edge of this. I want to spend as long as possible in the maximum density of asteroids at this speed. Alright, turn around. Almeya. And I think once we get there, we will... This is a good test right here. I want to see how much antimatter fuel it costs this thing to land... To take off from a 7,400 radius planet. Or why not even go for almost 10,000? That is actually the biggest planet I've ever seen. Hi, Rattel. Hi, Rattel. I guess we have a pretty good idea already. Um, well, I don't actually remember the gigajoule values for how much uh, energy that we need to take off a ship about this size from Nalvis, for example. No, I do. It was like 379 gigajoules. Because 400 was the maximum that we could fit in 400,000 liquid rocket fuel. Um, it's not going to tell us... It's not going to give us some numbers until we land for that. Or until we anchor somewhere. Yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised it just casually supports the maximum number of laser turrets that I just put in there. We're not losing any speed even when we dip into the accumulators, I don't think. Let's see. Where are we? Um, let's keep an eye on the speed and crank up the simulation speed a bit. 
it is not budging even at one one percent of one unit of speed. And it doesn't look like we're ever taking damage. Oh! Oh, that's the shield. So that's actually perfect. That tells me the shields are doing exactly the job that I assigned them to here. They are making up the difference when the lasers occasionally can't do their job, uh, which might actually be cheaper than having enough lasers to shoot everything down, power-wise. Cool, cool, cool. Are we there yet? Four minutes. Uh, we're at maximum UPS right now, 370. It's kind of pretty. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, and, um, before we get there, actually, you know what, we'll, we're almost there, we'll do it after. I want to add some chests, get the container stress up to, like, 500, and see if we get the exact same speed. 235.27 is our maximum here. Uh, let's put that back to normal. Looks good. Any ideas on cargo limits? Um... Once I confirm that if we stay below here, we still get the same top speed, uh, I'm just going to put in as many chests as I can um, to stay within those bounds. We do still have some tiles available for that. Although it is going to increase the hull stress slightly to fill in some tiles. Uh that are empty, but it's pretty negligible. Alright, so let's land on High Rattel. And we've got, what, 7.2k? This is different, though, 42k each. Let me just allow that to even out. Oh, I don't have any... I don't want to cheat because it's going to change the um, the level of research for the laser turrets. Hello, and what have you been up to? Nope, I am not here. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We are just in the sandbox game, uh, playing with exactly the tech level that we've got uh, in our main game and seeing what we can make in terms of a new player ship. Alright, so that's about evened out. We've got like... We've got, what, 50% of our maximum fuel here? And we're on the biggest planet I've ever seen, 9,851 radius. Uh, launch energy. Wow, okay. 736. Times what, 3? 2.5? We've got about 2.5 times the launch energy we need. And the tanks are half empty. I want to see... Wait, what? Antimatter stream, 100%, please. Uh, I want to see how many times we could take off from the biggest planet I've ever found with uh, the same number of booster tanks and about the same size of ship that we've been using before. 
but with antimatter instead of liquid rocket fuel. Hopeful good, Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Just a thought, can you double skin spaceship walls so have much bigger ships? Double skin, you mean like doing double thick ones? Um, I think under some circumstances that it actually gives us better hull integrity. Although it might just be because we're filling in empty tiles with wall- I'm not entirely sure how that calculation works. Okay, so we're full uh, on our antimatter fuel. And the number of times that we could take off from the biggest planet I've ever seen is at least four. 5.43 times. That's actually just fantastic. Alright, let's aim at... What's the furthest place we could go? We are here. Let's go to Stardew. And I'm going to guess that we have way more than enough fuel to get there. And back. And there and back again. And so on. That's one of the recent updates. It shows hull integrity breakdown to floor count, wall count, and empty space count. Oh, is this an update I haven't applied yet? Also, uh, our maximum speed. I think it was 5... not 5. Something 37? Well, we're gonna find out. As soon as this thing gets up to maximum speed, um, I want to add some chests while keeping container stress below hull stress. Uh, and then we'll see if, like, doubling the container stress has no effect on top speed under this context. It's a week old update? Okay. Uh, I had I actually haven't updated for at least a week. Two thirty-five point two. Should I just move these lasers forward slightly? I don't see why not. Kind of look. Slightly weirder though that way. Not that I'd been paying them any mind. Alright, 235.27. I think that was our maximum before. Hull stress will probably go up slightly when I add some chests. So we're at 526 right now. 527. Um. Wait, what was our container stress before? 196. Well, the point is I want to fill this out right here. Uh, we've still got room for more. We've still got room for more. Okay, so we've gained like a pretty trivial amount of hull stress. We should lose a little bit of speed. But it would appear that it's just whichever one of these numbers is higher. Because we've lost like two maximum speed. Uh, I think we're still slowing down, but we're almost... Yeah, we've lost like three maximum speed from adding all of those chests. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much it. For the back lasers, can you bring them back one spot and bring the wall down to match to keep it streamlined? Um, I could, but I think I like the consistency of this part.
Yeah, we've almost used every tile that we just happened to have spare um, for storage, and we've lost almost no maximum speed. 100% streamline at the moment? Yes, actually. Surprisingly enough. Well, I guess it's not that surprising. The, the flattest part is just this one bit of four tiles. You just have to have... Um, I think if it's like two tiles and then two tiles it might be streamlined as well, I'm not sure. But you had more empty tiles than 10% and added a chest, hull stress wouldn't change? Oh, if I had more. Oh, that's true. But if we have a bigger ship, uh, we have more hull stress as well, so... If we add some more empty space here... I think we end up with more hull stress, not less, right? Probably. What are we at? 538? Five thirty-eight. Okay, it's actually exactly the same. Um, I guess we could. No, I don't want to make it bigger for no reason. Oh, I think I was just seeing how the. Yeah, the floor tiles on the outside get repaired. Sections are, uh, get destroyed. Sections are disconnecting. Stopping to repair. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I wonder how close we are to our destination right now. Okay, not ludicrously close. But still. Just a, just a few minutes, and we've gone that far. I am really liking this ship. I'm going to get rid of the excess chests just for the moment. And I'll finish up... I'll finish connecting up a few things here. Oh, this should actually change to that one. Since that's the closer fluid container now. Um, I hope I don't already have a ship with ID 999 somewhere. Um, I think I'll just have the this as like the go home signal. Because there's only going to be one place that we're going to clamp this. So... No, if I have the spaceship launch signal, even if it's at its destination, it'll take off. Uh, planet orbit, I think it was 317, is Nalvis orbit in our save. Circles also work, indeed. I think it says so in the Informatron somewhere. Streamlining, here we go. Circular shapes should also be fine. Alright, uh, let's throw in some fuel control. What's, what's our max speed? It's over 200, right? I would actually need a combinator Well, no, I can add this here. If I connect to both of these combinators, speed signal, what was our top speed? 232? Oh, it was like 232 with the container stress, yeah. I haven't done an integrity check, so it still thinks we have all those containers. Um... I might get rid of this, actually. Speed signal is 33. That's like our minimum speed target. And if we read from speed signal here and here... The only danger of this is if we had no accumulator charge, we would still be trying to go 33 units of speed. 
I might just not circuit control the speed for this one. Um, in fact, there's no reason to. We literally just tested it to go max speed through triple dense asteroids. But if I'm going to control... Hmm. If I'm going to have a... If I'm going to have fuel control, then we need to not go max speed if the accumulator charge drops. Oh, engines turning off? They're fine. It's just because I was playing with that. Um, I can have a top speed of 200 with two accumulators. If I can squeeze in a couple more accumulators, I don't need a combinator. The donut spaceship would be even better if the thrusters went on the inside of the donut. Uh, they can, actually. I don't know if you lose some efficiency for that, though. I don't know if, like, they just need space behind them to not lose efficiency, or... They won't run at 100%. There you go. If I didn't have the extra solar panel, I guess, we could easily do this. Come to think of it, what if we don't need that exact number of lasers? Control. So our target is going to be up to 300 if we're at full accumulator charge. Now we have to test it going through... Oh good, we're going through Hailstorm right now. Let's aim for Galactic Graveyard. Was that galactic gravel as well? Okay, cool. So, speed signal, speed signal, speed signal. Our maximum speed that we're going to, going to attempt uh, when the accumulator charge is full is 300, which is significantly faster than the ship can actually go. So we don't need any combinators uh, to control that. And then, because we've got... Because we've got that uh, signal there, we can now say... Hmm. Oh, what asteroid density are we at? 300, perfect. Let's have a look here. Actually, I need the accumulator charge to hit maximum so that I can see... I'm pretty sure it's never going to dip to like 99% when everything is working. Rear two lasers not doing much? That's okay. Um, they're mostly just there because something did eventually hit this wall. But yeah, I guess that does more point to the fact that we don't need another laser up here. Edge case lasers, pretty much. We may, we may only need a couple of them back here, but I would rather be safe than sorry. Um, okay, so... Accumulator charge is maxed out. It's dropping to four, 748 megajoules when we dip into it. 
it's barely dropping at all. So I'm going to say the moment our accumulator charge drops below 95%, uh, which is to say 285 speed signal. Actually, I can look at it here to see if, um, to see how low it gets. No! Alright, speed signal. It's... I think it's always saying 300. Even when we dip into the accumulator charge ever so slightly. Wait, we're not in triple dense asteroids now, are we? Uh, we're about to be. Kind of. Let's speed this up a bit. Unfortunately, I can't peek at the interstellar map um, while we're in fast forward mode. Should almost be there. Perfect. Literally perfect. Okay, let's see. We're at 300 target speed. I want to see how low it gets when we just barely dip into the accumulator for a second. I'm guessing if I set it to like 295 means we need to put more fuel in, that should be fine. Yeah, it's... it's basically never gonna dip, like, more than 1% or something. Is this space? Indeed it is. Alright, so let's say when speed signal is less than... 295? Uh, that's when we are going to take out the used-up uranium fuel cells. When we do that, we're going to put in more uranium fuel cells. Oh. So when we detect used up uranium fuel cell, which is when we take out the used up uranium fuel cell, which is when the uh, accumulator loses some charge. And let's take out that for now. I would like to see... Let's aim far away somewhere. About Stardust. Stardust. I would like to see what it looks like when this drops to 500 degrees. Uh, how long we slow down for. If we... if there's any threat of Asteroids crashing into us. Uh, so let's speed this up as much as we can. And we're just waiting for this fuel to run out. Maybe it's, well, it's about the same on each of them. This one's a little bit ahead. Temperatures shared between these two in any case. Can you attach wires to nuclear reactors in SE? I'm afraid not. So once this hits 500 degrees, uh, a few seconds, well, more to the point, once this drops to 500 degrees, uh, this heat pipe right here, uh, a few seconds later, we're gonna start to lose accumulator charge. But I'm thinking with three Naquium accumulators, we might actually get that heat back up so quickly that we don't even notice a dip in power supply. You gotta deplete it manually. Um, I could just remove the nuclear reactors and put them back, but the point is I want to see what happens with this circuit and the heat drops down 
from a higher value. I could add something to drain power with the editor mode so that the turbines do their thing faster. But we'll get there soon. 760. We're halfway there. And once we're almost at 500 degrees, I'll um, stop going at super speed. I'm, re I'm really liking this ship design, actually. It's worked out better than I hoped for. The heat really is taking a while to drain, though. Six hundred... Ninety... 80, 70, all right, stop, I'm sure normal speed will be slow enough. It actually sort of, it seems like the heat gets consumed in little bursts as well. I guess it's per recipe. Alright, so once this part drops to 500 degrees, the heat exchangers here won't be able to generate steam. We're gonna start losing accumulator charge, and what I'm curious about is... Because of... Because we've got effectively six Holmium accumulators here, uh, is that going to be enough that we're basically not going to have a dip in speed and power and safety, is what I'm hoping for with the fuel management. 510, 509, it actually went to 508 for a second there. Or did I move the mouse? Seven, six, five, six. No, it's definitely fluctuating. Five, oh, three. All right, here we go. Output full. Five hundred and one. There it is. Should stop working in a second. Low temperature. Here we go. Accumulator charge is dropped to 700. Eh, there it, there it is. It, it didn't even get down by like 10%. That's fantastic. Heat's going back up. All right, cool. I'm, I'm not surprised, but I am glad I tested that. And I think that's it. I can't think of anything else we need to test for this build. No, I, I think that's it. Uh, what should we call this thing? My chariot. Noble Steed. I'm kidding. I don't know. It could just be boring and say antimatter player ship or something. Uh, why don't we call it the bullet? It kind of looks like a bullet. Ignoble Steed. <laughs> Cellfire, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Pink Pajamas, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. 
Yeah, I'm gonna call it Bullet. Um, should that be Absolute? I guess it does. Uh, early anti matter relationship. Alright, that's going straight to the pool room. And let's get into our game, I guess. I'm gonna save this though. Space exploration, sync mods. Fast AF boy, indeed. No name. Good to see you again. Well, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think now's as good as any a time for a little break and some words on stream. Should have fired it up before I had to save and load. And let me just make sure that I mute this. There we go. Can you start the save file upload uh, in the break? Um, I haven't had the time to check uh, to check out those options, but I will be doing that today. Um, let's see, autopilot on, and then. We'll start in 30 seconds, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, and I haven't forgotten to put the words on stream. Uh, display on. Alright, and... begin. Hold on, is it working? Uh, hello? Properties... It's taking its time. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool.
my clad. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How was your stream today? Uh, you kind of caught us in a break, but it'll, it'll be finishing soon. I cleansed Nalvis. Nice. That's a uh, that's a nice milestone. It was a good day, indeed. Welcome, Raiders. Uh, we just spent a little while, a uh, couple of hours actually, designing a a new player ship with our freshly unlocked antimatter engines. And it is nice and fast. It's still running off of nuclear power, oddly enough. But uh, we actually need ten times less energy to run antimatter engines than ion. So it's fine. All right. Good job, guys. Let's pause this and get back to Factorio. Uh, so where are we now? Uh, we're just sitting next to the comparatively pitiful uh, first little test ship that we made with antimatter engines. Let's deconstruct this thing. Uh, I want this in my inventory for now, so I'll pick it up myself. It's all in a robot network. Yeah, that's why. My robot ports are active, but um, bots from way over here are trying to help. Actually, let me get the scaffolding spiders to go just over here for now. How long has it taken you to get this far with this mod? Uh, yes. Uh, about a month actually, in terms of play, uh, like game time. Um, that said, we have sort of stopped to redesign things a number of times, and we've built you know, entire empires of spaceships on technology that we know is going to become obsolete, for example. So we're not trying to speedrun it or anything, but it is a very big mod. Is this almost empty? Not even close. So I've got my blueprint here of what we were just working on. Oh, it's it's one off. No, we're gonna have to pick up all of this. Ow, ow, do you do you have much more left to research still? Uh, yes, but we're at the. We've got the fourth last uh, tier of science complete. Uh, that is to say, Deep Space Science 1. We've produced 960. Or is that double that? I think it's just uh, 960. Nope, we've actually got 1.9k. Or we have produced 1.9k Deep Space Science Pack 1s. Um, very much bottlenecked on getting Naquatite back to, uh, the orbital base for now. We've got several, I think we've got like, f oh, this is four actually. And I think we've got like four or six, six over here, uh, deep space mining ships bringing back Naquatite, which can only be found in asteroid fields where there's no solar power. Uh, the first design I did to mine this stuff, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we use 
the spaceship itself as the power source. Uh, but then I remembered when the ship is away, uh, the the media defenses are not going to be working. Um, so for us, we're not just, we're just not going to worry about that one too much. Um, but for our second iteration, uh, we've got a power plant. It's receiving uh, beamed power from just about the nearest star. Um, so we pump a whole lot of power into this, uh, beam some energy over this way, and it receives it as heat. Uh, and then you've just got a pretty typical build, kind of like nuclear power, but it's with some higher temperature stuff. Heat exchanger turns water into steam. Uh, and then we've got this gigantic thing, which instead of, uh, kind of like a condenser turbine, instead of just consuming the steam, it spits out almost all of it as water. Um, but it also spits out some 500 degree steam, so we need these smaller condenser turbines as well. Um, and 99% of the water gets recycled, so that doesn't get consumed too quickly. We bring that back as ice um, in our ships when they come to get Nacrotite. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, of course, with our UPS at 22, the weight for those resources to crawl in is a little bit longer than it otherwise would be. Why is this not... Oh, this is completely full. Okay, let me just throw this down temporarily. This pump is still not moving. It's going to take a moment. That's actually a very large patch of Naquitite on a non-100 area. Uh, this... Okay, so our first one, Black Mirror, was maximum Naquitite. Uh, but we didn't... We found comparatively little. Um, but yeah, the Oblong... Oblong Lobulata. Uh, we actually have some pretty big patches. 5.1 million. Uh, 1 million here. Almost a million here. Uh, 2 million and 1 million here. 1.2. Uh, I think we've got even better at Stardust, which is maximum Naquitite. No, it's actually a pretty small patch here, but it is 1.1 mil. I haven't searched here very much just yet. Um, I was thinking when we graduate to some antimatter ships, uh, we'll set up a whole other... It'll probably be very, very similar to this, except for the spaceship, um, but we'll set up a whole other deep space mining system over here. This will be our third iteration on it. On second thought, I could just set up another one at Oblong, where the antimatter ships go. Then again, the throughput. Maybe I could make an antimatter deep space mining ship that fits uh, to this clamp. I mean, it's going to be pretty easy, unless I want to not add another pipe for sulfuric acid. Are we still scanning this? Yeah. Well, let's stop that for now. It's going to cost us some... Not UPS so much as save file time. You could set up a power ship which moves with the mines when they are done, I suppose. That might be a pretty good idea, actually. 
So like if uh, this arrangement over here... I would need to put a biochemical facility on a ship. Also, this thing is pretty big. Uh, the whole thing, if I were to go full power with it, with no Naquim pipe, we can nevertheless have eight high temperature heat exchangers. But I don't think I'll be building a ship that big uh, just yet. Oh, we're going to lose that little antimatter here. It's really cheap. It's actually insane how cheap antimatter is. Why is this not pumped yet? Oh, I see. If I just delete this in order, we're not going to lose any of it. It wouldn't have to be a quick setup. It'll take a long time to mine out a 5 million patch. Yeah, it will. Especially with Naquatite, which is extra slow, and the stack sizes are really small. Five times smaller than iron or copper. Ten times smaller than core fragments. Uh, okay, so let's grab our new ship. And we'll probably put that... I might actually put it about here, just in case I want to... Actually, not just in case. We need some water for this one. I could just steal the water from here. I think I will do that, actually. Not everything has to be in a self-contained block. Um, but n nevertheless, I want to leave some room in case I want to put a station up here. Alright, so our personal ship is going to go right about here. Is it all in the Roboport range? might be. Should have been playing this mod instead of 248k? 248k, what is that? Spaceships. Still waiting on the rest of the floor. You can finish 248k in a reasonable amount of time. A evil plug. Good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do we not have spaceship floor here? Oh, we don't have spaceship spaceship floor here. Uh, am I requesting? I am not. Where did that floor even come from then? All right, let me just go grab some more. And I need to update my personal requests. Uh, how much floor is even missing up here? Tile ghosts. 118. And then... One console, bunch of walls, shield projectors, clamps... Uh, already requesting antimatter engines. I am going to be needing some nuclear. Evil Pla, thank you very much for the resub. Five months, much appreciated. Let's have some sub action here. I wouldn't mind. Uh, reactor. Heat pipe, exchanger, and condenser turbine. Bring to me all of the things, please. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much again, Evil Plur. Let's head back. What do you call a reasonable amount of time? That is a relative question. Absolutely.
I guess relative question isn't exactly correct English, but the meaning is pretty clear. I wonder how close we are to getting Nequitite delivered automatically. 1.3k, that's close to a train load. Uh, 2k here. More to the point, 6 or 7 stacks, uh, 6 point something stacks in each chest is one train load. But we need a whole lot more than that before we trigger an automatic delivery of this stuff. Uh, how much do we have here? 6.4k, and I think it's only plate at the moment that we're bottlenecked on to get some sites. Deep Space Catalog 1. I'm actually not seeing any catalog on the belt. Now, there's a little bit left here. Okay. I don't think we're getting Flat Solar Panel 3 finished. In the very near future. A hundred hours would be an insanely fast time to finish SE, probably, yeah. I do wonder, I kind of want to find out, to be honest, um, if I were to blueprint everything beforehand, like in a sandbox, uh, and calculate all the ratios and everything, just how fast could we get through SE on, a, on another playthrough? Not even as a particularly aggressive or talented speedrunner, of course, just sort of approximate, well, like, what would be the baseline for a pre oh, I forgot to whitelist coal here. Coal. Negative a million on the requester chest for resources that are supposed to be in this block. The new two necro assemblers for plate aren't connected. Necro, uh, oh, necro assemblers. Necro. Necro? Oh, the new ones. Yeah, 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 I forgot to put this here. Well, this is empty, so we can see that's not too relevant right now. Except that I was trying to prioritize... I was trying to prioritize plate at the time. But yeah, good catch, thank you. I'll just have those there still, in case I do want to prioritize it. Alright, we got our spaceship floor. Now we can actually put down the rest of the blueprint. And let's see if we forgot anything. Didn't I request a console? Yeah, I've got a console. I think it, the bots are delivering some of these things. Oh, and I forgot. I think we had exactly three antimatter engines, actually. Uh, what do we need for an antimatter engine? Our precious few Naquium cubes, except actually we've got lots of them. Compared, comparatively. I just picked up the first few that I got from here. We have 88 Naquium Cubes. Um, what's the train load? Stack size is 8. I don't think there's anything else with the stack size of 8 so far. 8 times 160 is 1280. Um, why don't we just request... Uh, 2560. And I'll set the provide threshold here to 1 for the moment. Shouldn't even have a normal provide threshold, but that's fine for the moment. So we'll have a train come and bring that stuff to the mall. 
Hello, Alphonse, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Oh, I muted myself. Uh, I think I said hello because Alphonse smiled? Question mark? Anyway, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what do we have? Oh yeah, I wanted to see if we were picking up these cubes. We do not appear to be picking up these cubes. Provide threshold one. And the, I'm pretty sure the only place we're requesting Aquium Cube so far is the mall. I wonder if it's because I, I'm pretty sure it should go with whichever's smaller. The provide stack threshold and the provide threshold, but maybe, yeah, I think I was wrong about that actually. Okay, so now I'll just change this back to the usual. Provide stack threshold 160. That's a long train. It was a very warm welcome. Uh, thank you. Or you're welcome. Or both, I guess. Uh, okay. Antimatter engine. I'm pretty sure the only thing we're going to be missing is Naquium Cube. The reason that we just put nano material in there is probably because the recipe got swapped recently. We also need Naquium Cubes for antimatter booster tanks. Where's our train? Uh, it still hasn't left the depot. Actually, there's a surprising amount of traffic right here. It could have left up this way, but it chose not to. And every other train is getting right of way instead. Uh, I guess I should have just gone and picked that up manually after all. Please let the train leave the station. This is it. You can do it. I believe in you. No! Okay. I'm gonna go pick up the... What is it? Four Naquium cubes that we need to make this happen? I believe it's four. Uh... Yeah, four Naquium cubes. I've got plenty of depots, but everything seems to be happening here. Well, actually, I think I've got three depots for the long trains. One, two, three. No, there's four. There's another one over here. Although there's only one cargo wagon parked there at the moment. But, uh... I forget which block it was. Probably this one. I probably should have used that space for another depot, to be honest. Are we catching up with chemical gel, or are we still having problems? Uh, let's look over here. We're still having problems. And that probably traces back to petroleum. Petroleum. That's looking pretty empty. That one is ready for a pickup. It's actually got a couple of train loads here, I think. 
No, it would be full if it was a couple of train loads. Def the mod, it's just space explo things. Is UPS bad due to mod or is it PC not very good? PC is decent. Uh, the mod is huge. And I built things too big. Uh, not really, not realizing just how massive this playthrough was going to get. Uh, so for example, uh, this is our, this is our Nalvis. I've got builds in here that really need to be torn up and replaced, for, just for UPS reasons. Like, uh, here's Blue Signs. It's actually 320 machines. Um, and it's got the first tier of beacons. So, if we tear that up and put in wide area beacons, we can get the same throughput with far fewer machines. UPS load due to awesomeness? Yes. Just going for that mega factory aesthetic? Yeah. Like, I really could have, um... This is something I've been thinking about for a future playthrough. Uh, I could do a bunch of blueprints beforehand. Like, part of it is also, like... That this is a first playthrough for space exploration and we're, and we're like discovering things but um like uh our first build for rough data storage substrates has uh 200 assembly machines whereas oh let's check the rate as well so at max speed this thing gives us uh 118 rough data storage substrates per second so a little bit slower than 0.5 per second per machine, I think. A little bit faster, rather. We've got a newer build for that down here, uh, which gives us more rough data storage substrates for only 72 machines. Um, so yeah. Why is this one... Oh. What? Wait, what? Why? Why are we... Oh, no. I think this is supposed to go he here? No, it's backwards. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there, and that goes there. I'm surprised... Was this thing even functional? Uh, this is a new design I've been trying out for a somewhat balanced load across six chests. Um, all of this is going to go into one cargo wagon, so it doesn't matter that much that it's balanced. Uh, it's just for the speed of putting it into the cargo wagon. But if we use a typical balanced loader with a combinator, it's going to slow things down just enough that we bottleneck on the inserters instead of the belt. Uh, or a little bit more than just enough, actually. Uh, so what I tried here instead is on the last combinator, I mean uh, inserter, we say read hand contents hold and it's unconditional. And the rest of them on the same circuit wire are just anything greater than zero. So there has to be something in the hands of this inserter for the other ones to be allowed to pick something up. Um, so if I do this, for example, they're all going to stop. And as soon as something reaches the final inserter, they'll grab at the same time. Uh, definitely not going to be perfectly balanced, but it's it's functional. Well, I'm glad I inspected that. We've still got old Omni Smelter blocks to remove as well. We've still got a lot of... a significant chunk of the old main bus base to tear up. Uh, we've got this old sushi thing that was sending resources to orbit. Uh, we've got 
still quite a lot of the old, well, pretty much all of it, actually. Uh, the old orbital bases. Uh, that's probably not doing our UPS too many favors. Uh, yeah, I, I probably should spend a bit more time off stream clearing out stuff like that. The train came once I came to pick this stuff up. Wait. No, I remember, I, I just forgot to send myself back here because we did fix that. Alright, so we should have our Naquim cubes? Question mark? Or did we use them all already? Engine. We used them. Okay, as long as we got antimatter engines, it's fine. Uh, booster tank. I don't think we got any antimatter tanks, though. I was a little bit afraid of something like that, but I didn't think it would actually be literally all of the Naquim cubes went into antimatter engines. So we're not really going to be able to make another ship um, for a while <laughs> with antimatter. Unless I want to use just a regular storage tank, which has half the density. Relics of an older time, indeed. Uh, but yeah, like, for a fully planned playthrough, um, I could build things in a shape that will support adding uh, wide area beacons to it later. Uh, and maybe build things smaller, at least at first. We need some... Should that just be a requested chest? Well, no, it's usually a green chest. We don't have any uranium... Oh, wait. I see the problem. Okay. How far away is this going to be? It doesn't have to be that far. Let's just put those there. Oh, I forgot. Scaffolding spiders. Get back in range. Okay. Do you know how close you are to victory screen? I think I remember antimatter engines are kind of close. Um, I sort of assumed that we have to get to tier 4 deep space science. Nexus requires Deep Space Science 3. Uh, spaceship Victory requires Tier 4. Okay. Uh, I think there's other ways to win, but that is the only one that I necessarily know of. Okay, let's head over. Oh, I do have some antimatter booster tanks. I can make another one or two antimatter sh engine, uh, ships. Uh, but it's going to be a while before we mass produce them. I guess my bad haven't seen the tech screen for a minute. Indeed. Where should we go? kind of want an excuse to use the new um, spaceship. I could, yeah, I, I know, let's go to Foenestra, because I want to pick up those um, uh, what are they called again? Processors? Naquim processors. Uh, we can't make these for a minute, and there was like I think it was the tier 4 thruster suit that we could get early 
We can get it when we have Deep Space Science Pack 3, actually. Hmm. Was this the only thing? Naquium Processor, what do you go into? Naquium Processor... Energy Shield Mark 6, don't care. Uh, we need it for Deep Space Science 4, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that we want, like, one of as soon as possible. Oh, I think it was just... Damn, that's expensive. 42 Naquim processors and another... The thousand neural gel is just doubling the cost from this thing. 42 Naquim processors to update this to a deep su supercomputer. Thruster suit mark four. Yeah. Unknown key recipe name SE gate platform. Nine Naquim processors. Wait. Why is it made in an energy beam... what? That's kind of weird. Um... Oh, an Astra. We dropped in eight Naquim processors. Are you seriously telling me that what we just figured out from this thing we're probably not supposed to see... ...is, uh... ...we literally would need one more Naquim processor to to do this thing. Spoilers, indeed. Gretchen, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I guess it needs a bit of energy to make. Yeah. Um, so, I guess there's really no reason to go to Foenestra. If we need tier 3, three deep space science packs to get the Mark IV thruster suit. Um, I don't think... Naquim processors take deep space science three as well. Yeah, so once we're not like jumping ahead of the... We're not getting early tech by trying to bring that stuff back. I could visit the many, 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 uh, pyramids that I haven't taken our free, uh, modules from. That might be a good idea. Um, first of all, we need some pipe here. We need a pump. That's going to check. Actually, we really only need to pump the water in from one side. Um, let's put that up there. And maybe a 15. Uh, and we just need to read the contents of the nearest storage tank. Limit water to 24,500. Uh, it's going to go a bit over that, but the point is just to make sure that there's some room for output for the condenser turbines. And we will be wanting antimatter pumped in like so unconditionally 9, 10, 11, 12 that one's going to be a bit unfortunate it's as close as we can go
actually will want to be removing this once we can. Mac processors need arcospheres? I'm looking forward to arcospheres. Uh, what do we need? Tier 2 science? Arcosphere collector. So this is probably the last thing where we need to go to some specific destination. Collect autospheres from the interstellar void. Must be launched from a space probe rocket silo that is in an asteroid field. Arcospheres are more difficult to find as more are collected. Okay. Um, we've already got an asteroid field set up launching probes. We pretty much... Well, we'll probably just use this outpost, to be honest. Um, come to think of it... Come to think of it, what I could do... What I could do is have... It'd be a little tricky figuring out what I'm going to do with the... Um, Clamp IDs. Might have to change things a little bit. But I could have a ship just like this go to that same destination. But instead of bringing interstellar void probes, uh, it's going to bring Arcosphere collectors. Yeah. I watched people try to do arcospheres and they scare me. Nice. Yeah, um... I think the trickiest part of this is just going to be... How do we have this ship come back and land at Anchor 637? Uh... And a different ship come back to Nalva's orbit and landed a different, um, a different ID, but over here we're gonna have whatever clamp ID. Oh, I know. This one's on the right, and I think I probably made this symmetrical. Yeah, why don't we just say, uh, anchor using spaceship left clamp? to target right clamp is going to be 637 and then I think I did that backwards yeah I shouldn't have changed that um, so anchor using Spaceship left clamp to target right clamp. No, this is a right clamp and this is a left clamp. So yeah, I want to use this one when we're landing here. And using spaceship right, 637. Uh... This can just stay as 637, I think. And on the next ship, we'll have... Using... Using spaceship left to target right, we'll have different IDs. And these two will be different. Yeah, 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 I think that's, um... I think that's it, basically. And I, I'll probably build the, um, I'll probably build that here. So the thing that they're going to have in common is anchor two target left clamp. I'll just leave this as 637 and we'll change the one out here to something else. 
Why did I why did I pick 637? Probably it was the ID of the data or something that we're looking for. Here we are. Interstellar Void Probe is 637. Uh, I guess the thing that they have in common is that they're going to a space probe rocket silo. We could, we could look at that ID for inspiration for an arbitrary number. Or we could look at the automation signal for Stardew, 1135. I'm pretty sure I'm not using that anywhere. Let's see. Space probe rocket silo. 124. I'm sure I'm using 124 somewhere. What number should I use? For this clamp. Um... Hmm. If I use one of those smaller clamp numbers that we've used already, it could be a problem. Six three seven zero. Whatever. Okay. So that's going to be target left clamp 6370, which means this one's actually sort of irrelevant. It's actually looking here for the clamp. And I guess it's time to start carving out a spot for another ship here. What's going on here? Oh, this is trash. Okay, that should be fine, but why is this happening now? This stuff's going around in a circle. Everything we request here, we're allowed to have double in the network. Oh, I think I understand. No? We're just reading from these chests. Uh, I think over here we have some spares of those things. Condenser turbines, for example. Those are not... We're not reading from the robot network, are we? On this green wire? No, we're not. We're just reading from the, these storage chests. So... We're only requesting seven condenser turbines. And we're saying we're allowed to have double that in the network. We're reading the entire robot network. Oh, here it is. This is probably the issue. We're reading the entire robot network to check how many condenser turbines we have. We're, sub we're saying... Let's just multiply this by, like, five. It's because these ones here aren't being detected by the screen wire. Are there biters in this? Yeah, just not in space. Yet. Thankfully. A triple X poser. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How many hours do you have in this game? Yes. Uh, UPS is obviously a bit low, but for actual game time, it's about a month. Oh, I didn't put doors on this thing yet. Where should I put the doors? Um, how about here? I don't have any doors handy. I don't know if we've got any in this block here. We do. Fantastic. 
Okay. Uh, so we've got our antimatter fuel, we've got water. Uh, we need uranium. And the reason we don't have uranium is just that I haven't got that into the robot network yet. should be on its way. Fantastic. And I could add a bit of circuitry. Actually, I could use this right here. Uh, uranium... used up uranium fuel cell. So the moment I flick this, both of these inserters are going to do some synchronized inserting. And then clamp IDs for when we come back. Uh, I'll leave that on indefinitely, I think. Once the bots have done their thing here, we should be ready to get going. Alright, so where have we not picked up relics from? I'm pretty sure ev uh, I I'm I'm 90% sure every planet that I've landed on that has a Pyramid, I picked up the tier 9 uh, uh, module from it. Um, but there's a lot, and I do mean a lot of them, that we haven't gotten anything from yet. Let's find the closest one. I wish I could sort it by distance. It's not possible, is it? To search uh, planets that have a uh, mysterious structure by delta v from where we are. You can change the order of the planets slash systems. I guess if we go the hierarchy, that's going to... It's going to be a bit arbitrary, but we'll get clusters of stuff that's the same distance away. This is 51,000. There's hardly any biters. Oh, it's in anglers. One thing i got to watch out for is biters, though. It would be very sad if I let my ship get broken. And, uh, stranded. In fact, on, while we're on that subject, why don't we add some spaceship wall um, to these chests? Actually, I need to... Okay, thank you. Are we requesting spaceship wall here? Yeah, we are. But it's in all of these buffer chests. I see. Maybe I should empty the old, uh, the first shift that we made. Except to do that, we're activating all of these requested chests. Which means the bots are moving unrelated things over there. Well, that'll do anyway. Let's stop with the emptying. And now we should have some bots bringing us 
spaceship ball. Um, I've never seen anything else break if we get hit by an asteroid. I'm also carrying spare lasers and stuff if we need it. So I think just having spare spaceship ball should be more than extra safety. Hey, how's it going? Gentle mad scientist. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why don't we just look by this view? Uh, Keto Bar, I know I looted that already. This one doesn't have one. Regina. Hyperion. Wait, I thought this planet was called Hyperion. It's called Heliolite. Never mind. Alright, let's start with this one. Regina. It's got some biters, so we want to be careful. Maybe a spare power pylon? That's a good point, actually. Although I am carrying 50, but still. Uh, pylon... I mean, the only reason... The only reason that became an issue that one time <laughs> is because the enemy had artillery. And it happened to hit the pylon substation. <laughs> it was a very unfortunate... Alright, I think that'll be fine for now. Let's go to Regina. What do you think our ETA is going to be? We can't launch yet, probably because we just haven't done an integrity check. Uh, 22 and a half hours at current speed. I guess current speed is like if we're parked, it just reads it as the minimum speed that a ship will be able to go, even if it doesn't have fuel. Alright, let's find out. And... go. We're already at 70. 100. 120. ETA is already down to 8 minutes, and we're going to go like 50% faster than this. Brr, indeed. 200... ETA is going to be below 6 minutes, I think. I'm really quite pleased with the shape of this and the size of it. I really don't think we could get significantly smaller than this for what this ship does. Two twenty five and ETA Yeah, I think our ETA is gonna be greater than five minutes. The thing I like best is the power system doesn't get stuck. Indeed. I particularly like that we've got fuel management, but um, it doesn't even get down to like 90% accumulator charge when we let the heat drain and then swap in the new power, uh, uranium fuel cell. And, as you can see, we're not even going to come close to wasting any heat, I don't think. But I did put the uranium fuel cells in before we got going. With six antimatter engines, I was capped at a lower speed. Ship size must matter more than I thought. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hull stress is only 527 for this build. That's odd, I thought it was lower. This is about the speed that we got before. 
I must have just misremembered. Uh, is that us? Honey Badger? Are we already at the asteroid belt? It is. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is pretty cool. Even at 22 UPS, it does not feel like a terribly long wait to get somewhere. And we can just plow through uh, maximum density asteroids at full speed. 235 plus in the editor save, indeed. Uh, if I put in the maximum number of containers while still keeping hull stress greater than container stress, uh, we drop down to something like 232 or 232 and a half or something like that for, the, for our top speed. It is quite good. And it has... It, it needs so much less power than... Uh, I mean, this is four-tenths of one ion engine, power-wise, back here. Alright, what are we doing while we head over there? There's not a whole lot we really can do at the moment. Like, we're, we're still waiting on more Necrotite all the time. Um, except for... You know, some stuff that we need to do that we've been procrastinating. Where does this Robo network... I'm going to extend this robo network out this way. And I just want to be careful not to accidentally connect it to another one. I think I've got a. Uh, Deconstruction Planner Blacklist for this. Yep, here it is. So we want to get rid of all of this. Wow, nice ship. Thank you. Sheep say me. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Maybe I'll even... Maybe I'll even turn a miniaturized version of this into an emote. I really like this ship. It, it, it works really well aesthetically as well as the design and the specs and everything. Yeah, love it. Fantastic. We've got... Oblong 2, I think, is the next ship to come back with Nacrotite. Oh, I know what we can do that's more fun than just clearing out all builds. Uh, we need to... I'll get the scaffolding spiders over here first, because they can replace any scaffolding when I do it wrong. How many tiles across is this? Uh, it would appear to be... 20? How many tiles from the center? 10. Alright, so about there. And down to here. Approximately... Oh, the bots. The three construction bots in this block are doing their darndest. Hi, 
Hang in there, little guys. Help is on the way. I think I will just build this with ion engines again. Like, we really don't need uh, antimatter engines just to go to Stardew. Um, that ship is already pretty fast for what it needs to do. Yeah, so I want to keep this uh, this outpost completely unchanged, and we're going to get... Oh, I've already got it. Okay, Star Probe, Asteroid Belt. It looks like I can't set a request. Wait, what? I thought we went over this. I can set requests for science packs that I don't have yet, but apparently I can't set a request for the type of probe that I was looking at before. Uh, where was it? What was that research that gave us a peek at the last type of probe that we'll ever need to build? Interstellar Void Pro... Yeah, that was it. Wait, no. Asteroid Belt Probe, Star Probe, Interstellar Void Probe. Wait, did I... Did I just... Think that there was another one and there isn't? Or is it called something else? I'm sure it was deeper in the research... Uh, what does it take to make the higher tier sciences? I don't think we're going to find it here. You were thinking about Arcosphere Collectors. Thank you. Perfect. Arcosphere Collector. It doesn't have the word probe in it. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Quichen. Uh... Collector. Now I'm going to go out on a wild guess, uh, out on a limb, and say that this thing is also stack size 1. Uh, I think it already told us that we need to launch it from the space probe rocket silo. So let's see. Uh, where can I get... a peek at this? Item stack size 1. Perfect. Rocket launch products, 1 Arcosphere. Or, I guess it said that we get diminishing returns. But yeah, um... If we get diminishing returns... That complicates things. What is this other one? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, never mind. Uh, collects arcospheres from the interstellar void. Must be launched from a space probe rocket silo that's in an asteroid field. More difficult to find as more are collected. So we can't count on a precise count of arcospheres that we're going to get. So instead of... Oh, this might complicate things as well. What I want to do is have separate launch logic for the two different ships. That might be tricky. Worst case, I would just have to have a constant combinator outputting from the ship uh, in order to... Does it not output a ship ID? It does, 170. Rubber Band Rambo? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. Green wire is set requests and read water on the right. 
If I also connect the green wire to... It doesn't reach. We can do something about that, but still. If I also connect the green wire to the spaceship console signal output, I could say if it's ship ID 170, do this. If it's ship ID something else, do that. So the way this ship works is it takes out exactly the right number of interstellar pro void probes and space rocket uh, probe space probe rockets to bring back a certain amount of interstellar void data. We can do this because the stack size of these two is one, so we don't have to worry about the bots overfilling them. Um, but when we do the Arcosphere version of this, we can't count on a certain amount of Arcospheres. If not for the fact that the space rocket silo, space probe rocket silo takes a long time to do its thing between each recipe, I would just say when these chests are empty is one of the conditions before we go back. More faster, indeed. You uh, let me just check. Where are we actually? Only one minute to go, game time, till we're at our destination. Fantastic. I've been given hints that there's a secret um, associated with when we go into the pyramids, the stuff that we see on the floor. Uh, I don't know if there's a code to break or if they all just point in a certain direction. Maybe even the direction that these things point. If it's, It could be that simple. That would be up this way. Where's another one that we've been to? Does... Varus have one? Uh, I should have just looked here first. Varus does not have one. It couldn't just be a pointy direction. Because we could peak using the navigation satellite. And we wouldn't actually have a destination to type in. So we can somewhat safely deduce that that is probably not how that works, just because gameplay. I've only actually saved some screenshots of a couple of these. Um, let's see. Streaming. Uh, S.E. Mysteries. I've got Deadwood, Morpheus, and Sanj. Uh, the glyphs on the floor have been screenshot. In multiplayer, you can't actually peek inside the pyramids. With the navsat. Wait, you can with single player? I don't think I can. I think I have to actually go there to look inside. Unless I could use this to flick back to them, but that certainly got limited utility. Twenty seconds. I actually love this ship. It's very cool. Oh, I can look at our power as well, see how often the shields have been doing their thing. Uh, shield is green. Shields... Shields had to do something three times so far this trip. 
and that was a couple of minutes ago. The whole trip has been six minutes. Don't think you can in single either, you just don't notice as easily. And we are here. Alright, I need to have a peek here first so we don't uh we don't get greeted by the neighbors. Assuming there are any. Uh threat three percent. Just barely. Where's the pyramid? Up oh, there it is. Well, uh, we found zero biters around the very center, so I think we'll land there. And I'll run off and grab the module. Uh, we've got plenty of lasers. Yeah, I don't think I have to swap out things anymore. I should probably stop carrying this power armor. I would like to know if damage resistances matter at all while we've got energy shield. But I'm not sure how you could test that easily. I'll just leave the spider here for now. I can probably just do all of this with lasers to be honest. They're not going to go outside are they? No they can't I don't think. Do I have any jetpack? No. Oh yeah, I forgot we were trying to do an experiment with night vision versus the perfect night vision goggles. And I left those goggles somewhere. satisfied. They're covering up the... I know I know just what to do. Wait, what? Uh, what about this? I thought placing buildings made the biter corpses disappear. Was it something else? Construction denied. Okay. Uh... What about... Okay, some of... Placing some of these things gets rid of biter corpses. You can open pyramid location directly from Informatron? Informatron. Archaeology. Oh. Oh, cool. Alright. Wait, I should probably delete that surface for now. Which one was it? I think it was... Ber it wasn't Berkey, was it? Oh no. Which one did I click on just now? Wait, I know I know just what to do. Uh, Ixion. Ixion. Yeah, there it is. Delete surface. History in Navsat, indeed. Alright, let's uh, grab the speed module. Take the selfie. Zoom in a bit. And what's this planet called? Uh, Regina. Save as Regina. Cool. And on to the next one. 
I take selfies too, but I stand at 12 o'clock right under the chest. Okay. Let's get back to the ship before some biters eat it. We do... Technically have lasers covering all of it. But if we got some spitters coming from behind, we might be very sad. Maybe I should be placing a couple of lasers when I go on these little outings. Okay, back we go. And I'll just put you there so I don't accidentally pick up something else. Alright, what's next? Uh, Reva doesn't have one. We've been to Quito Bar. Hyperion doesn't have one. How about Electra? Picard has one. Why don't we start with that? There's a few biters here. 100% biters here. And it's waterless. I don't think we're going to find a safe place to land. How many of these things do we really need to visit if we're going to, like, solve the mystery? Assuming we can even do that. Let's go to Irene. E Irene. How much uh, fuel do we need to take off, I wonder? Planet size is 7,000. I didn't even think about it. Uh, we've got 46k in each tank. It's going to cost us 540 gigajoules. No idea, but there's 60 locations, I think. And that cost us 5,000. So it's less than... Uh, it's less than one and... It, this is going to be a rough rule. It's probably not perfectly linear, but... Less than one antimatter per radius to take off. Oh, that's per tank, though. So it actually cost us 20,000 antimatter to take off. Uh, one fifth. No, it was 10%. Five. 20,000 out of 100,000. That is one-fifth. But it was... Oh, these are not even. Wait, what? Did I not wait until these were full before we left? Well then. Land and just Tesla gun them all? I don't really want to risk my ship that way. Uh, it depends how much room we could find around them, really. Uh, but yeah, ETA, we're almost at top speed, is only five and a half minutes. Nice. And you know what? I may as well stand up the bow and... I mean... We've already tested it. You know what? If anything, I would rather find out if, um... If we can sometimes take a hit from an asteroid in this ship. So I'll stand back here. I'd rather find out when I've got the replacement walls ready. And we're not like running this thing on autopilot only. Uh, did we get... Let's remove that. Don't need to kill the trees though actually. I didn't mean for the construction spiders to pick that up, but I guess that works too. Oh, um, cancel deconstruct. I don't want... Did I just... Oh no. Poor little train. It got cut in half. How did this happen? I would have thought... Didn't I do one giant deconstruction planner over this? 
So how did we get half of a train? How, how did we bisect a train, I wonder? Uh, why don't you... Can I give you a temporary stop? It's on manual right now. I can't give it a... It's facing the wrong way with the signals that we've got. Oh, no. Oh, poor little train. Oh, the humanity. That's connecting to... All of this. You know what? That's fine. I don't even care right now. Just help me get rid of this old stuff. And I guess I get all I guess I could get all of those bots to clear out this poor little train. What if I use this? There we go. Alright, so we've got our robo put wait. No 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 don't don't connect those two robo networks actually. That's that way lies madness. That's probably how I got all those bots in there before. I remember checking one of these robo networks and it had an insane sixteen thousand construction bots. Okay then. And the spiders walked in range of the train. Okay. Alright. Disaster dominoes continue. Uh, may as well... Mark all of this for deconstruction now. The spiders are already going back home with too many items. Alright, where are we? Four minutes out. That's right, I wanted to try to design Arcosphere collection way ahead of time using existing infrastructure and changing very little. So we're gonna requ we're gonna bring in twenty pro brockets and twenty arcosphere collectors. Perhaps. The reason I went for 20 last time was because that gave us about how much that ship could fit for data, but Arcospheres are going to be a bit different. They're going to be unreliable and inconsistent. But that's a whole other problem. Let me just... Let, let me tackle the easy stuff first. So... This part's actually pretty easy. This is gonna... this sets the destination for the ship, and it sets the requests on those chests. So, if while the ship is here, it's requesting interstellar void probe data and arcospheres, that's gonna be totally fine, as long as we don't leave any of those behind when we get going. So, arcosphere... Reci no, we don't want recipes, we want just Arcosphere. And I have no idea uh, how many we're going to be taking back. Let's just look for like 40 per chest. Um, the logic that we've got here is when... Interstellar Void Probe data is greater than or equal to 40k. We're going to launch. We'll, we're going to get exactly 40k from the, um, the probes and the probes that we bring in. So I guess we're just going to add another combinator here that's going to be the same, except it's going to say... Well, here's the tricky part. When do we know 
When do we know that we've finished collecting Arcospheres for this trip? I think... We would probably need to check... Oh god. We would probably need to check this chest for Arcosphere collectors. That needs to be empty. And then we set a timer. I think those are the lengths we have to go to for this one. Um, we should have, I hope, a... nope. Uh, hmm. Where is our outposter? Number one and two. Keto bar, destination keto bar. Okay. Vazanus. Oh, I totally forgot about this. Uh, please place some more solar panels. And I think I trimmed the top one of this a little bit, because we were just a little bit short on scaffolding. How many science packs away from Arcospheres are you? Uh, I don't know. Arcosphere is Deep Space Science Pack 2. Um, pack 2, which we could start researching right now, takes 2,000... Deep Space Science Packs uh, Tier 1. And then we need to make the four different data cards and the catalog build. Well, we've already got the catalog build set up for the most part ahead of time. Uh, I think that's going to be over here, actually. Yeah, this should be... Like this, except whatever goes into Deep Space Science 2, or the Tier 2 catalogue, that is. Broad Deep Space. Uh, so that's going to be Annihilation Data. Whoop. That is surprising. Uh, where were we? Annihilation data. Hyper lattice data. Singularity and time space anomaly. Singularity and time space anomaly data. And we need to set these uh, to the same symbols. So I believe that was annihilation data, paper lattice data. And then we can just copy that, uh, copy paste that across. Singularity data and time space anomaly. And then we're requesting all of those down here. Space Anomaly data. May as well update the station name. One, two, uh, three, and four. Uh, can we start on 
yeah, we can already start designing those as well. Definitely doing some of that today. Uh, but yeah, this is where we're going to be doing our broad uh, catalogs. Alright, so this should fit here pretty well. Fantastic. Where are we? One minute forty from Irene. Nice. Oh yeah, I was looking for the outposters and then I realized I hadn't got them to finish their jobs. The other one was um, hovering over Keto Bar. Did I need to do something at Keto Bar or had it just finished everything it was doing? I think it was just supposed to take high temperature heat exchangers and stuff. Um, I... Yeah, this is the one that somehow ended up with 175 high temp heat exchangers. Uh, so I want to land that over here-ish. There's some pipe in the way. Uh, and it's probably also bringing a bunch of drills. Oh, and ammo. Don't tell me... No, we haven't been without ammo this whole time. Oh, we got the drills. Fantastic. How's our power looking? Uh, we're about to find out with our maxed out power plant here. It's actually draining heat, uh, but is that going to be consistent or... We're only, we're only using a gigawatt. I mean, we're only producing a gigawatt. Is this all working? It looks like it is. Oh yeah, of course, these things heating up initially are going to drain a ton of heat from the energy beam receiver when it first starts. Uh, it does... Okay, our heat is increasing again. So we don't have to go back to Vazanus. Oh, it's actually this ship here. That would have been super convenient if I needed to add more energy beaming here. How much power do we have? Uh, we've got like almost 8 gigawatts to spare, but that probably includes... Actually, yeah, the nuclear power... No, I think... Yeah, well, let's just say we have 7 or 8 gigawatts to spare here. Do you need to check in on that crashed rocket? Crashed rocket? Probably not. Uh, two of them, actually. Oh, one of them was ages ago, because that was the slash time I did a while ago. Uh, and this one? Yeah. We have roboport networks around where the crashed rockets, uh, where the rockets may crash. So that gets itself sorted out. Nice, all sorted, indeed. 27 seconds to our destination. Uh, yeah, so I want one of those ships... They should both be carrying combinators and such. Yes. And they should also have some... Well, this one doesn't have any scaffolding. It has a tiny bit of scaffolding left over. Uh, does this one have scaffolding? Lots of scaffolding. Okay, cool. I should actually send this one to the sun if I still want to expand the solar power there. 
Um, yeah, he is climbing, I'm pretty sure. But is it still going to be climbing if I place lots of... Lots more core mining drills here. The thing is, we're well into diminishing returns as well. Uh, we're getting 71 core fragments per second. But if I add 8 uh, core miners here, assuming that we have those, which we might not. Oh, we've got 26. Okay. Yeah, those are all here. Okay, cool. Um, are the bots not gonna... This one's actually not connected. So what was it? 71 core fragments per second that we've got currently? And I want to see exactly how much more we get with another... 400 megawatts of power consumption. Where are our bots? There they go. I'm looking into code trying to find out spaceship mech speed. I found the code, but analyzing it, that's another story. But there's drag calculation due to imperfect vacuum. That makes sense. Although in video games, things like the vacuum are a lot soupier than you might expect. Alright, so we've gone... Uh, what do we have here? 10. We added 40% more coal mining drill. And we got, we went from 71 to 84 core fragments per second. That's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's pretty decent um, compared to what I was expecting. But I'm not going to bother adding any more core drills to this one planet. That's almost a full belt on each side. Also, where are our ships? I just want to make sure there's no problem with them. You are at Nalvis waiting to land. Heat bar 2. At Nalvis waiting to land. Heat bar 3 is on Nalvis. And it hasn't had all of its erudite core fragments taken yet. That's fine, as long as, as long as we're keeping up with Iridium uh, ingots. The main thing that comes to mind is, since I don't see a ship here right now, I think the answer is probably yes. Um, we've got 4.8k Iridium ingots. The main thing that pushed us over the edge so that we had a deficit was uh, Sanj Orbit swapping Iridium ingots and explosives uh, and delivery cannon capsules for that matter to get copper core fragments back. But that all seems to be going just fine. One, two, three, four, five, six sand ships are in motion. Fantastic. Okay, we have arrived. Uh, we've got 1% fighters, so let's just watch out for them. I think the 1% just means, because we've got biter medias, oh, it says 70 17% now. Did I misread that? Uh, anyway, it looks like we can safely land right next to the pyramid. 
Let's do that. Anchor. Right about here. Greetings. Let's use some Tesla, why not? You know what I want in Power Armor, actually? Let me know if there's a mod that does this. I want auto-launching rockets. From Power Armor. That would be cool. that? Wait, what? Oh, nav satellite doesn't let me look at this. There's a little bit of terrain up there. It's kind of weird. That was a nice and heartfelt greetings. I know, right? Ooh, a prod nine. I should probably dig up all of the prod nines that I've found and put them into Naquitite processing. Uh, yoink. And... Yoink. Alright, selfie time. And... what do we call this one? Uh, where are we? E I R E N E. Just crop that. E I R E N E. Fantastic. All right, on to the next one. I need some legs. Give me legs. Much better. And swap that out again. Let's get going first. Uh, this one is clear. Do we want to risk going to Picard? Let's view surface and we'll make a decision. There's not going to be really any pollution. So... If I land like here... Do it? You can clear them all easy with the Tesla gun? It's a bit spooky though. Ooh, look at that nest. Alright, we're going to try. Uh, and what was the planet called? Picard. And keep an eye on our fuel as well. It's still pretty decent. Let's make sure we recharge our batteries for the meantime. Actually, we really don't need that many personal lasers. Okay. Uh, what else was I doing? I keep losing my train of thought once I get to this. Oh, that's right. I wanted the... I keep calling them construction ships. The outposters. Where are you going? Oh, that's Deadwood 6. The outposters look pretty much the same. Uh, number one is still on the ground. Am I absolutely sure we don't need anything else here? I could build those, but... But why not? 
let's just extend Robo Network around, around this way. Luckily, the power poles just happen to reach that way. Interesting, if ship is four times longer than wider, then there's stress integrity penalty. Yeah, it does mention that, although without any specific stats. Uh, I don't think it's under streamlining. Is it under hull stress? Integrity stress. Exceptionally long, thin ships, or ships with very thin sections in the middle, are less sturdy than rotund, uh, than more rotund designs. Wide ships are sturdy, but must clear more asteroids. Does that mean that the long and thin spaceships are misread? Yep. There's just a penalty for hull stress for that. If you make a toothpick of a ship. Bullet is... Wow. Every time that updates, it skips, like, an entire ship length. Okay. There's actually so much going on now, after all that waiting that we had to do. Um... I'm pretty sure I've figured out more or less what we're going to do here with a carbon copy of that ship, but with different requests. Um, also, now that I think about it, an easier way that I could do this, since this is all in the one robot network, um, I could literally just have the same... I was going to say I could have the same settings on these two ships, except that on the right side it's going to set requests to the Arcosphere collectors, except that's actually going to cause a problem, like if this one lands on the right side. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think what we're going to do out at Stardew is... Condition 1 is Arcosphere Collector has to be 0 from this chest. And then on top of that we're going to add a timer. And I'll set it to like a minute. Uh, how long does it actually take the Space Probe Rocket Silo to do its thing once we get the ingredients? We're basically trying to say... I could do a really advanced circuit and like count the number of Arcosphere collectors that we put through. No, that still doesn't work because we get an unreliable amount of Arcospheres out of it. So we need... Oh, I, I may be over overthinking this. Um... We could just have X seconds of inactivity for this inserter. And also, uh, Arcosphere collectors in this chest equals zero. Or we could calculate read network contents minus what's in these chests. We could just read... No, that's the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this green wire, we should get a count of how many Arcosphere collectors are still in the spaceship. So that has to equal zero, and we need X seconds of inactivity from this inserter at the same time. 
and I'll set it to some some high value until we get a feel for how long it actually takes for this thing to launch. It shouldn't be too difficult. So I'll just park one of the uh, outposters here. We'll build a couple of combinators. It should be pretty simple overall. Um, so we're going to have a decider combinator here that says uh, Arcosphere Collector equals zero. That's in our ship. And that's going to output something like a green signal one. And then another decider. So we'll have a timer here, a decider that says timer has to be greater than X. Timer gets reset whenever this inserter uh, picks up a Arcosphere collector. Uh, and then another decider combinator for when green signal equals two spaceship launch. That should do it. Oh, we're here. Oh, let's be careful before we land. Uh, let's save the game for no reason at all. Absolutely none. And I might take a short break after we grab this, uh, this module. Okay. Saving map. And resume. Uh, Alright, so we're going to land right about here, I think. Oops. Inca uh, on Picard. Add a couple more laser turrets. Hmm. Live and let live? Somewhat. They're not going to all aggro when I go in here, right? Oh, I can go in this way, I think. Except then they're just going to aggro when I come out here. Speed module and things look okay out here still. Oh, well, that's one way we can clear all the debris. Let's do the selfie, paste that in here. I'm not going to do the editing stuff until we're clear. Whoa, don't, don't pick up the antimatter engine, actually. Okay. Easy. Let's launch. Double check how much fuel we have after that as well. Even though it is still plenty. Alright, so this is Picard. That save as pick card. And on.
on to the next one, I suppose. I don't think there's any more in this system, right? Nope. Also, let's delete surface. So the save file doesn't get too out of hand. The next star is Capellus. We've been there before, but have we visited all of these mysterious structures? Uh, apparently we've scanned Aquila, but I haven't actually been there, I'm pretty sure. So, let's head there. Only four planets in this system? Uh, yeah. Probably. We have done a lot of scanning. Uh, zone scanning. But it is possible there's still something to find here. Alright, let's go find some trains to look at. Uh-oh. I'll deal with that after the break. Uh, and let's get some words on stream going. Scale the summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, words on stream starting in 30 seconds or so, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Lolio? Lolilo? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, back in a few.
How are y'all doing? Uh, very nice. Alright, let's pause this for now. And let's continue with the space exploration. Morning, morning, Manky Kitty. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. How far are we from our destination? Only three minutes. I could get used to this. I could definitely get used to this. Okay. Uh, so mainly... Oh, right. I wanted to check if the outpost is ships. I think this one's done. Should be done with what it's been doing. Yep. We can leave some of those roboports behind. It's fine. There should be spares here. Uh, or is it here? Yeah. We've got a couple of roboports. We don't need a lot where we're going. Let's go to start you. Should be plenty of fuel. Fantastic. And I'll clean up these excess roboports. Cool. Oh, we're shooting down meteors. Get wrecked. Okay. Heat is up to maximum. Fantastic. And what about that other outpost ship? I think it was at the sun still. Uh, yes. We can get rid of some of these uh, superchargers. Whoops. Oh, and there's already a bot on the way to replace it. Nice. Pylon substations. Can replace those radars. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Um, according to Tumbling Satellite, radars eat up UPS quite easily. So I wanted to do a little experiment today. Once we've got these once these bots have done their thing and I can stop paying attention here. What I'm going to do is run this deconstruction planner right over the entirety of Nalvis. So what's happening at this small base? Uh, it is just some solar power, uh, media defenses so that we don't get our stuff smashed. Uh, we have a delivery station from the, uh, the little ship that delivers media defense installation ammo all over the place. And we've got some energy beaming. Uh, both of these are aimed at Keto Bar. This one's for the power plant. The other one is aimed here for the, uh, the beam receiver based ships that land here. And Keto Bar is where we're getting a whole lot of Iridium Core Fragments. Actually, let's check. Core Fragment Iridite. Uh, we are currently getting, pretty consistently, about 5.7, 5.8, 5.9k. Let's call it 5.8 thousand per minute. Uh, 96.67 per second. And then right here we're getting 84 per second. So this is now the vast, vast, vast majority of our iridite core fragment mining. Is that an energy transfer system? Yes, it is. Um, it has three modes. Uh, well, two modes really, and one of them is an auto-targeting mode for the glaive, which burns things. Uh, but the utility version is Energize. We pump in a whole lot of power here. Uh, three gigawatts. Wait, gigawatts? 
Is it gigawatts? Or... Yeah, 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 it must be gigawatts, surely. Yeah, three gigawatts from these energy beam injectors. Uh, this thing here, the chamber, is basically just a conduit. Uh, and that goes to our energy beam emitter here. That's going to beam power to a receiver. Uh, and it actually just receives it as heat. From which we can build a typical nuclear reactor style uh, power plant. Not got that far yet. No worries. Uh, and fortunately, the late game uh, high temperature turbine generators, uh, much like the condenser turbines, they recycle almost all of the water that they consume. Or all of the steam that they consume comes back as water. 99% uh, of it, I believe it is. It definitely is that with the condenser turbines. 99% uh, of what goes in here comes back as water or 500 degrees steam. How efficient is it? It is rather efficient. 98% uh, actually. For converting the energy from steam into electricity. Isn't that a dev tool which tells you what is using the most UPS? Uh, if we turn on, uh, what is it called? Debug mode. I can see that stuff, yeah. You can change, is it F4? You can change the settings for what's visible, whether it's always visible or only when you turn on debug mode. Uh, Tom Lee, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what's been happening here. And I already sent the other ship to Stardew, didn't I? Up poster number one. We just need a little bit of scaffolding and combinators and stuff to be added to that outpost. Uh, this one, I think we're ready to send back to Nalvis Orbit for resupply. I can't think of anywhere else that I need to send these right now. Probably it would be a good idea if the next thing I make with antimatter engines uh, is going to be a, a, a few more construction ships. So I can get them where they need to be very, very quickly. Been here for a while, just lurking. No worries. In fact, now that I think about it, we've got room for a roboport right here. Um... I could trim a couple of antimatter engines off of this design since it's... Nah, it's fine. I mean, we'll need some more Naquium to get this done, but... I would rather the construction ships can get there fast. We're gonna go a bit higher on hull stress or container stress. Um... If we convert this to... Uh, to being a construction ship. But yeah, we'll just slap a roboport on one of these flat solar panels. Uh, throw in some more chests. And that's pretty much going to be it. If they made SE a DLC, I think UPS is the biggest problem. As it's far more complex than the base game. Um, I mean, I did build things very big, but yes, uh, the mod itself is huge. Uh, unless you deliberately limit how much you build of everything. I think UPS going down is almost sure to happen, uh, depending on your, uh, your system. Uh... If you build somewhat big, and you're playing through it blind the first time, you're probably going to hit that wall eventually. As the Factorio team did hire the person who made SE mod, so who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's a great mod. I... Blame isn't the right word, but I don't blame them. 
I know I would. Alright, so outposter... Oh, it hasn't even left... It hasn't even left Vazanis yet. I'm not used to the ships being slow anymore. Oh no, how fast are you? 75, that's not... 76 really, that's not that slow. But compared to uh, 234, it, it's kind of painful. Also, those ships go slower in an asteroid field. Uh, so here we are at Aquila. There's almost no biters. Let's anchor next to the uh, pyramid. I don't feel like squishing as many trees as possible, so let's go here. Maybe I should put some doors closer to the front. It will impact hull integrity just a tiny bit. I should put on some old legs. How about this? In fact, how about this? That feels better. Alright, another speed module. Go outside. Go back in. No more biter corpses. Uh, we do have some stone in the way, though. We probably don't need that many legs. Let's have a couple of roboports. Okay. Selfie time. Oh, I forgot to edit the last one. Uh, does anyone remember? Oh, I saved it as Picard, actually. Yeah, no, good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's screenshot this. Paste here. Crop it. And save as... What's the name of this planet? Are those Stargate symbols? Who knows? Uh, what's, what's this planet? Aquila. Aquila. Fantastic. Alright, let's head out. How much antimatter fuel do we have left? We haven't even used like 30-40% of our fuel yet. Alright, who's next? Elpis doesn't have one. Uh, Toxinora has quite a few biters. Um, it does have a mysterious structure. Oh, and this is where Deadwood is. I can I kind of forgot. All right, Toxinora. Let's go. How far have you gone on that fuel so far? We've gone from Naubus orbit to... Uh, I think we started with Vazanas. I don't think we went to Regalus. There is at least one, two structures here though. Yeah, we went to Vazanas. Went to, not Keto Bar, uh, Regina. Oh, I forgot to delete this. Uh, Hyperion, we didn't visit. Oh, and we had to take off from a planet with radius 7000, by the way. Uh, then we went to Electra. Picard. 
we haven't gone here. We did go here. So that's two planets of radius, 4,100 or so. And not here. And now we've gone to Capellus, and we were we were just at Aquila, 4,000 radius. Uh, and now we've headed down this way. And we're headed for, which one was it? Toxinora? Uh, and we've got about a little bit more than half of our fuel left. And that's out of four tanks that add up to uh, 200k. So antimatter fuel is the way to go if you want to fly around the local group. Oh yeah. It's, um... So we actually had a really small ship that we made to test it out um, yesterday. Let's go to now this orbit. It looked something like... Uh, I guess I need spaceship. Oh wait, I can, I can put ghosts down here even though we couldn't build that there. Okay, so it looked something like this. Uh couple of solar panels. Oh, I can't... Oh, pretend these are tier 3. And then a console. And I think one... I think we added this a bit later, but there was one uh, shield projector. And a few lasers. Um, and that was basically the whole ship. We went to Calidus orbit, the sun, and back. And the whole thing round trip cost us, I believe it was about two seconds of production of antimatter fuel here. Um, yeah, it was about 600 antimatter stream to go from Navis orbit to Calidus orbit, and then the same to come back. So... Pretty good, actually. Um, oh. Apparently we can put antimatter engines on just a bunch of scaffolding. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had to, like, click here and mouse over this to be able to see how much uh, antimatter fuel was consumed, because just mousing over it, it just said 50k of 50k still. At least from the the trip to the sun. All right, where are we going? Uh, where are we? Toxinora. There's a, a lot of biters here, so. Um, uh, where do I? Toxinora. It's not alphabetical. It is not alphabetical. Let's just view surface. Are the dark panels expensive to make? Uh, yes, you need Naquium for those. And I can't actually make them yet. We found some at a couple of places. Where's the pyramid? Uh-oh. I guess it would have been easier... After all... Oh, I saw it. Toxinora. Here we go. I dared to hope it would be on an island. If I want to be really cheesy, I could land in the middle of the water. Um, it turns out you can land a spaceship on the water and it just makes some land there afterwards. But we won't do that this time. Let's get in there. Hmm, I could use some more lasers, actually. Is this an efficiency module? I'll take it. Okay. 
and then we run outside and then run back in. And someone has tidied up for us. Take a screenshot. And what, what was the planet called? Toxinora? I believe. Save as Toxinora. Let me check if that's right. What the? Uh, now set. Toxinora. That's pretty easy to spell, actually. Why do the bugs not charge at you? They don't even seem interested. I think I was just too quick for them to wake up with the way their AI is. They only charge at you if you're within a certain distance. They are charging, it's just one third game speed. Yeah, it's a bit of that. The invisible biter corpse janitor, indeed. Alright, let me just make sure I save that. Fantastic. Uh, where are we going next? We already checked those two. Elazar doesn't have one. We've been to Deadwood. Morgana and Eo? Uh, Berkey. Radius 4000. We've still got quite a lot of fuel. Berkey. Away we go. With your FPS, it looks like the Bite of War... Like Bite of War in slow motion, indeed. Yeah, it's just making us a speed super intelligence. It's fine. Morten, Daniel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are you planning on doing the spaceship victory? Uh, yes. I think that is what I'll go for. And I don't actually know of another path to victory just yet. I mean, I know Foenestra maybe might lead to that, but who knows. Uh, this is one of the places that we got tier 3 flat solar panels from. There's a broken ship here. Okay. ETA is only 90 seconds. Uh, what can we do in that time? We've got the data cards available to be designed, right? For the next tier of science. We should probably get started on that. Uh, I would definitely like to have those up here. Scaffolding spiders are already there. Let's get started. With some rail box. I don't think they've got enough scaffolding to do uh, four blocks at once, but we'll see. What are you guys doing? I think it was because of the scaffolding that was in the in the spider's trash slots, maybe? You're gonna build a giant ship for that? I know the second secret ending, but I won't spoil. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, it would be interesting to see how small of a ship I could make. Um, uh, what's the target speed? Spaceship victory. It's only 250. We're almost there already, except that we have to throw on some kind of probably gigantic uh, science thing and run it while we run our spaceship. Uh, but I am curious to see how small of a ship we could make. Considering this thing is already maintaining 234 speed, uh, I'm actually pretty optimistic that I could probably... Ooh, that's a bit dangerous. Uh, could probably make a relatively small ship to get it done.
That said, just for fun, I also would like to build a giant ship or two to see just how fast we can go. That lurching means the spiders are placing rail signals right now. Uh, once you get up to a certain threshold, uh, you're going to get a little pause every time a signal is placed. Maybe... Nah, it's fine. I was going to say maybe I shouldn't have had the scaffolding spiders carry rail as well, but no. I think I would prefer this. It looks so chunky right now. Is it hard for the computer running this mod? Yeah, this is an exception to what we normally experience. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see that every time, every time a bot places one of these uh, signals, the game pauses for a moment, and we're placing quite a lot of them right now. Uh, actually, I can also demonstrate this by not even picking them up, but just marking some rail signals for deletion. I'll find some that are outside of a robot network. So if I... Um, if I just mark all of this for deconstruction, uh, UPS is going to drop precipitously for a moment. Uh, more than a moment. It's taking like eight seconds or so. And then if I undo that again, same thing. Large train networks can get a bit funky when you make any changes, yeah. Apparently it's reparting all of the trains uh, every time I do that. Uh, and it doesn't actually help that this rail network is on a different surface from this rail network, apparently. Data Gnome, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Game has to recalculate all the train paths. Yeah, there you go. Night Dancer, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Too many signals? I mean, this is about the minimum number of signals to signal these intersections properly. I think. Point six point six FPS out? Yeah, it's not really 6.6, .6, it's like average over the last second, which is like zero. Do you have a bunch of trains that are no pathing or something? No, it's just because they have to repath whenever we change a signal. Um, I did have some frequent no pathing issues a while ago. Uh, at the depots, we have, just in case the train comes back here with items, uh, they get taken out and delivered to a trash uh, pickup station. This is a vanilla station, so just if there's anything here, uh, a train will come to pick it up. Um, I did at first use Enable Disable, but the trouble with that is sometimes you will get a trash train parked here while items are flowing in this way. And while we're reading from these chests, if the condition for the station keeps activating and deactivating while the train is here, uh, you're going to get basically a bunch of trains repathing every single time the inserter swings. Nice idea on the depot trash, thank you. Hey Raren, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wish you all a great Monday, thank you. What did you set your resources as when you started just a hundred percent? Yeah, I didn't change any of the settings. Um, I wanted the, like, default space exploration experience. I might seriously consider... Oh, that's right. It only affects Nalvis, though. Even so, I might seriously consider just not having biters on a second playthrough. 
um, because it just makes the slow st uh, the start slower, really. Oh, we're here. Let's check out Berkey. Uh, Berkey, there it is. And I'm not seeing any biters. I thought we had biters here. Oh, it's only 17%. Okay. I think I misread it as like 60 something percent from the number nearby. Let's put the door next to the pyramid. And in we go. This one's shaped a bit different. Speed module. I'm not going to reach that with lasers. You know what? They can stay there. Actually, no, they can't, because they might stay here eating up just a tiny amount of UPS. And I'm not having that. Can I jetpack this? No, I can't. Okay. Uh, so we go outside so that the janitor can do their thing. And nice and clean. Let's take a screenshot. And this was called Berkey, this place, wasn't it? Uh, save as Berkey. There we go. go. Uh, let's take off and figure out where we're going next. Tycho doesn't have anything. How much fuel do we have left? Uh, we're down to 30 or 40 percent, so I think I'll go back to Nalvis orbit now. How long do you think the ETA is going to be? From... Basically, Capellus to Calidus. I'm going to say 10 minutes once we get up to speed. Rod modules don't work in space. Yeah, that's mostly correct. I think the only thing that does accept prod modules in space is the uh, science labs. Anything else, if you want productivity bonuses, you need to do it on the ground. So what SE materials are you making on Nalvis? Uh, all of them? I mean, anything that we can only make in space, we make in Nalvis orbit. Um, anything that we can get a productivity bonus for, I think with one little exception, it was probably heavy assembly. I could make this on, uh, on Nalvis for productivity bonuses, but I looked at it in FNEI, and there's only so many things this goes into, and we're not going to be mass producing it really uh yeah heavy assembly the th the the volume of things that we're going to make with heavy assembly is very limited so i'm just making those here but pretty much everything else or i think literally everything else that we can get a productivity bonus for um we're making those on nalvis Oh, miners. Yeah, that's true as well. You can get prod modules in miners in space. Okay. Where are we now? Oh, that's right. We're heading back to Nervous. 
ETA 10 minutes 35. Uh, yeah, my, my estimate was pretty accurate, actually. 5 or 10% off. Okay. Why don't we design some... Uh, some science, some data cards. That is a weird pattern that the uh, spiders made with their limited scaffolding. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do the usual input. We're going to add some signals here, and here, and here. Which data card should we do first? Blank data card, particle stream, antimatter stream, and data comes out 100% of the time. That is an incredibly straightforward recipe. I, I find myself saying this a lot. Uh with the deep space science packs it feels like it feels like they just swapped the difficulty from complexity with a lot of these builds to just get that nacrotite all of a sudden but arcospheres are coming up so that'll be fun this one's not so easy so these two are really straightforward uh this one is this one gives us singularity data. Oh, singularity data is the objective here. We get Naquium Cube recycled half the time. Junk data card, thermofluid. It's pretty straightforward. Like, this this is a, a build that I've gotten used to making. And this one is maybe a great excuse for some sushi. Time space anomaly data. One, two, three, four, five inputs physically. 30 second crafting time, that's good for sushi. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight physical inputs. Fluid in, fluid out. Gravimetrics facilities are relatively small. Um let's see. Two, three, four. Everything except for Naquium Cube gets recycled 60% of the time. All the more reason to do a sushi belt. One, two, three, four, five. I think we'll do. Hmm. I want to play some more with what I've learned recently with sushi belts, where we don't have any, uh, what is this? Is this busted, actually? Or is it just because we don't have Iridium plate? Where's our Iridium plate? Where's the input for Iridium Plate? This one looks okay, it's missing blank data cards. Iridium Plate traces back to here. Uh, okay, so... Oh. Well, there's your problem. Yeah, that was the whole problem. I'll be interested to see if this thing recovers. I think it will. They should all have those other two inputs already. Yep. Blank data cards are moving. Uh, so here we have blank data cards and... What was it called? Space platform plating? Uh, these devices here... Basically, we have a splitter, 
with input priority on the side that is recycling. Uh, we block half of the output. So we're bottlenecking on half a belt here. And then 50% of it goes this way and gets recycled. 50% of it goes that way. So this device basically just bottlenecks uh, this half of a belt to become a quarter of a belt. And we do the same thing on this side, and then we merge them, and we get one-to-one -one blank data cards and space platform plating. Uh, over here at the end of the sushi belt, we recycle everything. Uh, this is our output product. It comes down this way and gets filtered off the belt. Um, but yeah, everything gets recycled up here. We're doing the same thing with Iridium Plate, so it's only taking up half of this half of the belt. Uh, so there's room to output the particle beam shielding data. Uh, all of the... All of the contaminated scrap comes out the middle here because there's lots of it. Um, and this filter inserter here takes out everything else. Uh, because we get Iridium Plate back some of the time, we just put it back on the belt and then pick it back up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the first time I've used um, just splitters uh, to organize sushi on a belt. On another note, I unlocked Spidertrons yesterday. Congratulations! Uh, one thing, my, my one, okay, not, probably not my only complaint if I think real hard about it, but, uh, the biggest complaint probably that I have about space exploration is it takes too long to get some nice toys. Like, way too long with slow bots, no spidertrons, no substations, and so on. Uh, but yeah, so I, so when I look at this recipe, um, what I want to try to do, I could have Naquim Cube on its own belt just to make it easy, but maybe not. Uh, if I were to limit those other four things to a quarter of a belt each, that leaves no room. If I were to halve it yet again, the trouble with using splitters for this is there's only certain... well, okay, unless you use some complicated... Uh, uh, some complicated balances, like... what do we got? Two to three. This is not what my brain is optimized for. Uh, unless you use some complicated balances as well, you're only getting a half or a quarter or an eighth uh, of the usual bottleneck. Um, if we stick to that... So we've got... The four inputs, other than Naquium Cube, come out sometimes. Time Space Anomaly Data, Blank Junk and Broken Data Cards. All of those need to be filtered off the belt. The other stuff needs to be recycled. We need room for those outputs to get onto the belt. So, if we did something like this, probably looking at like one eighth of a belt for each of those items, or, or each of the input items, that might work, especially since that recipe is quite slow. 
How do you make micro black hole data? Uh, let's see. I think we've got that um, over here. Zero point energy. Oh yeah, that was the one I accidentally made twice. And then wondered how I had made all four data cards for that tier. And yet hadn't finished. Micro black hole, you see. Uh, that is over here somewhere, Astro. Where is micro black hole data? Uh, I didn't like change that and forget to change the icon or anything. I thought all of the Astro stuff was over this way. Dark matter. Oh, is this it? Micro black hole data. Left edge, yes, thank you. Uh, so that is blank data card, particle stream, coolant, and sometimes we get, quite often we get junk data cards instead of our output. Uh, we need we needed that for uh, catalog. We needed that for the tier four uh, astro catalog. Okay, left side, right on the edge, indeed. All right, so. Before I get carried away just staring at time-space anomaly and thinking about how to do it... Why don't we just build it, actually? I was going to build one of the simpler ones, but no, I don't feel like it right now. Um, so we have five inputs. We can easily do four from one station. Well, let's have a look at how I did it over here. It's one, two, th three on one side. This is, uh, different. I might just use that and do two on the other side. Let's see. Oh yeah, these are on separate halves of the belt, and then we split that away. I see. I see what you did there. Uh, we're going to need a station. Standard request a station. And then something like this here. Something on this side. Scaffolding spiders, keep doing your job unless you run out. How close are we? Five minutes. Um, but more to the point, we're going to need a beacon. Uh, probably... Somewhere in the middle. Nope. You f from America? Nope. Australia, actually. Uh, we're going to put the usual in the beacon. Actually, that's just speed. Uh, we want whatever... Whatever gives us the minimum power consumption. Actually, I think it's quicker if I do it this way. Efficiency, seven, and speed. Upper side of that station is wrong. Uh, it's just a placeholder for now. Oh, it is wrong though, like significantly wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, what? It's 
remove that for now. Okay, so we are needing particle... no wait, uh, gravimetrics facility. And who knows how many we're going to make. Let's just tentatively put this here. And that should have beacon power. What sort of work do you do? Uh, nothing at the moment apart from the streaming. I'm looking for something that I can hopefully fit around as much streaming as possible. I've got about a month left. Uh, so, time space anomaly data. Um, that needs to phase like so. Should have done the recipe first. And then, if we give those speed modules. Wait, what? I haven't got this programmed in yet. Gravimetric facility. And then... How fast would this be? Only two per second. Really? I knew it was slow, but that is slow. Yeah, that's that's really slow. Um, maybe we should double that. Any ideas what you're going to do after you finish this playthrough? Uh, I think I would like to dive into Oxygen Not Included. And maybe keep up a, at least a bit of Factorio, like maybe a couple of days a week. Uh, and find some other challenges. Something different from this for a while, like maybe some Death World at first. I haven't really decided. Uh, so this would be four per second. You're never going to finish space exploration if there's a full-time job. Yeah, I don't... It's really difficult to find something that doesn't... That isn't all or nothing, unfortunately. Uh, but I would strongly prefer to find something that just... lets me get by and have plenty of time for this. Uh... Alright, so... So that's gonna be, at most, the shape of our... How much is our output and everything? Uh, we are producing four, 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 four... This is actually net negative over the, over here. So we're actually producing 16 items per second out. It's actually less than half a belt. We can probably get away with this. I want to give Oni go at some point, also Stellaris and Rimworld. Uh, Stellaris and Rimworld can confirm are good games. Uh, and I've played a bit of Oni, I just haven't got all that far. Now then. Uh, what I was thinking was... Oh yeah, these were different throughput rates as well. Now inputs are all... Net 2.66 per second, which is like nothing, basically. 
So we're not going to need stack inserters, that's for sure. Uh, so, what do we have? Naqueen Q? I think we'll put that on its own. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's remove that for now. You played Dyson Sphere Program? Uh, yeah, not, not so much of it yet. Let's go for Naqueen... Queen cube. That's a tesseract. And this is also. Wait, what was highlighted down there? Oh, I see. A queen cube. Next is gravitational lensing data. Gravitational lensing data. And then we have negative pressure data. Negative pressure data. Copy paste that across. And up here we have uh let me look at the recipe again. Micro black hole and zero point energy. It feels off if I have two chests for every other resource and they all go in at the same speed. Well, technically, sort of, at first, they go in at the same speed. Okay. Alright, so, thanks for the stream. Night, everyone. Take care, whiskies. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Micro black and zero point. Micro black hole. Zero point. Downloading DSP and Factorio on the same day, and I absolutely loved it. DSP. I enjoyed vanilla Factorio, but not as much as DSP. Wanted a bit more with the game, and SE is exactly what I wanted. And I'm enjoying SE Factorio even more than DSP. Nice. Do you play any FPS games? Uh, yes. Like, not actively right now or anything, but I've absolutely played a few shooters. Um, not as many modern ones, though. They're not as much to my tastes. CSGO? Nah, that's not really my thing. Zero point, energy data goes here, and uh, I need to make sure to reconnect these, and don't forget to connect this and that, uh, and then we just merge it like so. I'll probably have them all come in at about the same spot. Main game at the moment? As long as you're having fun with it. Uh, what have we got? Oh, I should check where I am in the spaceship. Uh, two minutes out from Nalgus orbit. Which is actually six minutes. Real time. Let's go with this, actually, and I guess I need to remove those. 
That should all be connected. Just like this one. Um, Alright, so we've got a half belt or its own belt for these five different things. And ideally, I just want to use splitters. Hang on, let me calculate this. Um, we need 6.666 Equium cube per second. Maybe this one should be on its own belt. So I'm guessing management type games are your favorite? Uh... That's not quite right. I mean... Hmm. I play a lot of Rocket League these days. Um, I'm not... I don't think I'm good enough to stream Rocket League. Like, I, I, I think... I would have to be, like... Significantly better for that to be entertaining to watch. Command and Conquer? I haven't played that in forever. It was a good series. Or maybe it is a good series still. I don't really know. What am I playing right now? Like, outside of streaming. Rocket League. Terraria. Uh, I started playing a little Borderlands 3. What else was there? Uh, I think that's mostly it for now. I'm usually playing a lot of, like, one or two or three games at a time. We need to see at least one Rocket League stream. You don't have to be that great as long as it's entertaining. I could do it on a variety day. Uh, I actually have streamed Rocket League before, but it was, like, when, when it was still Tiny Baby Channel. CNC has gone down the toilet. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I'm only like, uh, like diamond creeping into champ in Rocket League. And I know that is like top, I don't know, 10, 15% or something, but, uh, it's still sort of just short of where it starts to get good to watch, I think. Um, what I'm focusing on at the moment with Rocket League is just lots and lots of uh, rings practice and uh, air roll aerials. I can get through... Uh, I can get through Lethemir's Ice Rings map uh, with left roll pretty convincingly. I'm still relatively new with right roll. Um, but even if I'm not great at actually doing that in-game, it has, like, it, it's taught me a, a whole lot about recoveries, um, and it gives me all of these options to, like, rotate my car right before I hit the ball in a way that completely changes the shot. Uh, it's been quite useful, and it's also fun. Okay, I think... I think I might work on something else before this, because I, I feel like I'm gonna run out of, like, mental energy before I... before I get the belts and stuff sorted out. I might do one of the simpler builds first. And send the construction spiders. Wait, what? This one? Died? What died? Oh, C and C did. Yeah. Are we back yet? Six seconds. So, kind of. Let's get refueled, and we'll figure out... Which planet we want to visit next? How about Regulus? 
Uh, the big one doesn't have structure. This one does, but it's got a 100% biter threat. We didn't actually have that much trouble getting uh, getting into the structure despite 100% biter threat previously, though. 9,847 radius. Ouch. Um, that is the biggest planet that I've seen in this playthrough, definitely, and it may be the biggest that I've seen, including in that uh, sandbox save. Anchorus, uh, we've already been to Orchard, and there's actually nothing else here. Uh, Wexavis, Dead Rim, we haven't been to, no biters, nice. Wait, what's this? Why do I have Sharon uh, searched? I probably just clicked on this once and forgot about it. Uh, delete surface is what I meant to do there. 9999 is the max radius, I see. And then we've got Coscomino with another mysterious structure. Alright. Uh, it is actually gonna... Oh! I, I never turned this back on as well. So it's gonna take a little while before we get our... Well, uh, pretty much as soon as a train gets here, plus a little bit of time before this is filled up. I saw a dude who had a 10,000 radius planet. Eye roller. Alright, let's get some trains in the screensaver. Throw up some words on the stream. And... Uh, run, don't walk from... Sponsors. And I'll throw in the autopilot. All right, back in a few minutes. Have fun with the words on stream.
absolutely crushing it. Alright, let's get back to SE in a moment. How many levels did you guys skip? All of them? Only two? I feel like you guys got robbed there. Alright, off with the autopilot. And back to the game. And we should have our antimatter. Fantastic. Did we decide where we're going? We failed on seven or eight. Uh, rip. Uh, Regalus, Silverthorn, no. Alba. We're going to Alba. Don't forget to turn off words on stream. Uh, thank you. Good call. And launch. What's our ETA to Alba going to be? I want to say... Well, it's about the same as Capella's. So about 10 minutes again, once we get up to speed. Wait, what? What would you... What? What just happened? Uh... I don't have a destination programmed in here. Did I not type Alba here? Did I just launch with destination now for Zorbit, and then because we had the clamp signals, it just popped back in? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Speed is... at about half now. Yeah, it's going to be like 10 minutes. All right, cool. Um, it just occurred to me again that we're down to... We only have 12 more data card builds to go. Uh, that is... It's almost sad, isn't it? We're actually getting close to the end. Well... Relatively close. Let's do one of the simple ones up here. Since my brain seems to be checking out a little bit from trying to figure out this uh, sushi. But I think I actually... I don't know. After a short break, I might just have it. So I think I have a blueprint for this actually somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Quarter belt limiter. So we've got our input comes down this way. Uh, we bottleneck here on one belt or half a belt. And then half goes here, half goes here. Input priority on the recycle. So that limits it to half. The end is not the end. You still have to do SE megabase 10k SPM. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Hank Tank, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so, this part's just for recycling in at the end of the sushi belt. But if we want, instead of half, well, let's say we want a quarter, we just need to... Uh, how do we do it? No, it, it's the other way around. Um, something like this. So this is our output, and all of these go back to the input. And if we're preserving which side things are going to be on, um, it's going to look something like this. And if we're going to insert from the end of the sushi belt, uh, it's going to look something like that as well. So this will give us... Let's say we're doing a half belt down here. Half belt comes in here. We get a quarter belt coming out each side. And then we get half of that. So one eighth comes down this way. Uh, and I don't think it matters 
I don't think we need any more, like, input priorities over here. All of this is just getting recycled. Where's our spiders? Just arriving? Um, so one eight. Is that what we need? We've got five items. And we need to leave some room on the belt as well. I think that's probably fine. What is one eighth of a belt? Uh, 5.63 per second. Um, so if we're doing 1 8th times 5, 25 over 8, 5.63 times 5, 45 minus 28.15, uh, we've got 16.85 items per second, there's room on the belt left for 16, and our output is actually 16. We're going to be outputting this stuff straight back onto the belt, but it'll also go straight back into the machines and it'll also be getting recycled. So we can pretty much discount that. This is actually pretty much perfect, in theory. Should work pretty well. But we need one of these machines for, I think, all five of our inputs. If we're going to use belts to limit them. I don't look forward to trying to figure out how to fit those together and make it look nice and stuff. Let's do a little bit of an easier build first. And... We're either going to do this one, and that's incredibly straightforward. What is it made in? It doesn't show what machine it's made in, so it can probably be done in an assembly. Uh, what are we up to? Annihilation data. Oh, it's actually a particle collider. Why didn't it say so? Oh, it does say so. Wait, which one was I looking at? What? Was I just blind earlier? Okay, made in particle collider. None of these happen to be made in like an antimatter facility or anything. No, we're good. Particle, particle... Particle laser particle grav. So this one's going to be particle collider. I might see if I can borrow from myself. I know I've got some... Here we go, particle colliders. This one is blank data card and two fluids in. Which is exactly the same as this one. Except we don't have to worry about an output fluid. Or junk data cards either, actually. This is just this recipe, but easier. Uh, I might simplify this build a little bit, but yeah, this build should be pretty easy. Unless we have some throughput issues, but we'll see. So we are looking for annihilation data. And apparently we don't have particle colliders set here. Particle collider, speed, and go. Hmm. 
Okay. So how fast would this be? 20 per second? Okay, that's overkill. Uh, at least compared to some of our other bills. This is 6.25 and it requires a ludicrous amount of um, iron to keep up. This is 12.5. This would only be 4. I guess we could double it if we have to. Uh, on the other hand, different data cards have been needed in unexpected places. Annihilation data. What are you used in? Literally just broad deep space catalog. Okay, so we can probably cut this in half. Uh, but first I would like to... You know what? I might just remove everything except for the beacon and particle colliders here. Oops. Beacon. Collider. Blacklist. And... Go. And we won't be needing that again. Okay. Maybe I should have left the input pipes, actually. No, I want to, like, see how this shapes up. I think we only need one tile here for... Fluid? Maybe? Oh wait, that's gonna... That's not gonna line up very conveniently, but what can you do? Alright, let's put some pipes down and see what it looks like. Can these reach across if we use a three? Uh, yes, actually. It's a little hard to see, so I'll do it here first. We're basically just doing this. And I guess it doesn't matter that that doesn't line up. So close. Not really. Uh, let's use a fiver for this one. That still doesn't reach. How many tiles is this? Three. We can do that. That's actually pretty good. And then this still doesn't reach? Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, I think I like where this is going. And then for the antimatter, we just do it like so. That's actually really neat. Couldn't have planned it better myself. Flank data cards in, annihilation data out. Uh, I guess we've got two belts here, so it's going to be pretty slow individually, right? 1.25 per second. So we can literally just do... Could I rotate? Well, it won't let me rotate this blueprint. Oh, it does. It's flipping it that it won't let me do. So if I put this like so... Yeah, I like that. Alright, so we're going to cut... I'm going to bring this over here. And we've got a nice clean build. Uh, except... Yeah, no, that should be 
fine. Do we have room here? Tell me we have exactly the amount of room. We do. Input belt, output belt. Input belt, output belt. And input belt, output belt. Uh, calculated? Scripted? I actually uh, planned this from the very beginning of the entire playthrough. That's why I built the rail blocks like this. Yeah. you love to see it happen. Alright, so we have some inputs here, and outputs here. And like so. What's our rate for fluids? Oh, we've got 16 of these. It's only 100 per second. The shape of the pipes won't matter at all. Uh, let's go inputs. And outputs. Wait, what? No. Why does that one... Oh, wait. Does that line up? I think it does. Oh, I see what happened here. This actually goes like that. Cool. Uh, the only question, though, is... The only thing that makes this any less perfect is how do we get the antimatter in? Uh, I guess we have to go over here. And if we were to leave room to double this in the block, uh, we'll have that pipe like so. And same thing over here. Also, don't forget to actually connect these. Let's use pick of dollies just to make sure we can see what we're doing here. Oh, that's already connected. Oh. Well then. That would have been confusing if I couldn't see what I was doing. That's fine. And I guess we'll put some pipe here. How many tiles is that? Three? Four. This'll do. Let's add a request to station. Uh, how many inputs do we need? Two fluid, one some blank data card. Uh, only 20 blank data cards per second. So we could do it all at one station, really. Or I could just do two fluid up here, blank data card over here. But I would have to move this down a bit, but we really don't need much room for output. So I might just do that. Except I already put the underground pipe here. Wait, was Arendel hired by Wu? Uh, is that the space exploration? One of the space exploration devs? The answer might be yes.
logistics. One of these has a... One of these spiders is holding onto a particle collider somewhere. Oh, here it is. There we go. Fantastic. Do we have room, actually? If I... Oh, let's do the... Oh, I almost made this mistake over here. Or failed to catch it. We're going to do output like so. And input like so. Founders post on Patreon. Cool. And then... One, two, three, four. We could probably put this here. Let's say... Uh, let's say we put fluid input here. I'm just measuring for now. And then blank data cards from here. We could use this space. That should be fine. If we have any trouble with the size of it. Oh, I almost forgot undergrounds here. Looks like Factorio expansion will be interplanetary. Very cool. Very, very cool, actually. All right, so can we fit? We only need 20 per second, less than half a belt. So uh, yeah, we can actually fit this really easily. Let's start with the chests. And I'll go for fast inserters because why not? And we just need to merge and split. And balanced unload. Do we have room for this actually? Just barely. Uh, calculated? Exactly as planned? I could make that a little bit neater if I move all of this down a tile. It's going to be more consistent with this over here. And then we're just going to connect all of these inserters. This bit of belt. Read belt contents hold. Everything equals zero. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. I could also read hand contents, but that should be enough. They'll all output at the same time. As soon as there's something in the middle section of the belt. No, I, I will read hand contents. There might be a moment at the start of it that some of them will start to swing again. SE for the simple mind would make me happy. Indeed. I would definitely approve of something like space exploration, but more of a gateway drug. What are we asking for? Blank data cards. The thing about uh, the complexity in Factorio, though, is you can deal with it piecemeal. You just have to learn one little bit of it at a time. You don't have, like, 
Okay, space exploration, especially at first, and especially when you don't have rail blocks, is less like this. Um, but I was going to say you don't have, like, everything interlocking with everything else, so that you have to grasp the hole before you can even really get started. It's definitely a bit of that if you're designing it with belts or something. Spajo aka Geek, thank you very much for the resub. Right. Two months, much appreciated. Appreciate it very much. What are we looking for? Blanks. And it feels really weird to be able to say this, but I'm pretty sure we've got lots of blank data cards. That is such a strange turn of events. Blank data card requester. And we can call those in whenever we want. Um, so fluids. Lots of blank data cards? Yeah, we're completely saturated on blank data cards. Part of it is because we've actually got, like, really good resource throughput. Uh, and part of it is because, of course, we're not doing research. Um, everything is stopped until we get Naquitite. I wish I had that issue. We have not had an overabundance of blank data cards for basically the entire game. Uh, but here it is. We've got almost 14 train loads of blank data cards available right now. And most of them are getting shoved into uh, probes at the moment. Okay, so we just need to line up these fluids in whichever way is more convenient and good looking. Uh, let's do an underground here, so that we can just connect these two like so. Hmm, maybe I should have left more room like this. Does that reach across? No. I could put some underground here, and then we could connect these like so. I think that's what I'll do. That's actually pretty convenient, I'll just go with that. Okay. So we need three, four tiles, that's unfortunate. That's actually the minimum number of connection points there. Maybe we could put a 3B here. About a 7, and that would be a 6. A 5, and a 7, and a 1. Uh, this also needs to connect like so. We could either have the underground like this, and then that goes up there. We could either do it like that. I think that might look less messy in the end. That needs to be a 3B. And then, what have we got? Six tiles. Unfortunate. Five and seven, and how about another five? And I guess we could sort of do the same thing over here. Uh, 
many tiles is this? Perfect. Uh, but then we need like one more. Two more actually. For that to reach. Hello, I saw your blueprints on Factorio Prints. Can you upload some spaceship blueprints as well? Sure. Especially the loading, unloading circuit stuff. Uh, any, anything in particular for the loading, unloading? The thing I'm most happy with, uh, with the loading, unloading system is this thing. Uh, this is when I first figured out, oh, I can just do basic math. Uh, we can't read contents and set requests on buffer chests. And this thing needs to bring lots and lots of, uh, input to get the output that we're looking for. But it turns out if we just account for all of the copper core fragments that are not in the ship, have a specific place for them, uh, and then we read them with circuit wire, we can just subtract that from what's in the robot network. Yes, this thing? Okay, let's grab a blueprint of that specifically. I'm pretty sure none of that circuitry has anything to do with it. Tiles. And what do we call it? Um, set requests and read contents. This is getting wordy. I'm just going to say set requests example ship station. Nice, thanks a lot, no worries. Um, and I'll just put a combinator there. Alright, uh, export to string. I'll throw it on the discord first. Set requests, example, ship, sand, orbit. Let me get a little screenshot of this so I can add some visual aid to that. I'm going to need it for uploading to Factorio prints as well. Okay. Uh, cut that. Paste in the old Discord. And if any of you are looking for it there, this is the link. Alright, Factorio Prints. Factorio School is a rewrite of Factorio Prints. Huh. I'll have a look at that later, maybe. Uh, create. Refresh, because it doesn't create the first time. Reprint string. It no. I need to get the blueprint string again. Uh oh. Um. Okay, I have it on the Discord. Let's copy that. Blueprint string. Fantastic. Circuit counter. Title, uh, set requests, yep, sample, 
mods, other. I need a description. Uh, spaceship using set requests. Buffer chests to deliver and see items. Subtract robot logistic network contents minus contents specific chests equals contents of ship. Uploading on prints, searching on school. The search on Factorio prints is not really functional, I see. Leo Buthers Factorio is a scorpion? Uh, okay. All right, here is that uh, on Factorio prints. Enjoy. And if you have any questions, uh, by all means. Oh, we're here. We're at Alba. Alba is a hundred percent bite a threat. That's a little spooky. Here is the pyramid. Uh, it looks like it's pretty far from some biters, actually. So we should be able to just land here and get it done. Let's make sure we put down some extra lasers, just in case. Wait. Oh, I don't have any roboports. There we go. And in we go. Productivity module. Nice. I'm pretty sure that's the one I most care about. Yeah, without a doubt. Alright, step outside so the janitor can clean this up. Thank the janitor. Take the screenshot. Get into the ship before it's destroyed. trim that. Save as Alba. It was A-L-B-A, -A, right? Yep. Cool. Where should we go next? Uh, thankfully we don't have to go to Silverhorn. Unfortunately we have to go to Mirac Mireska. 100% biters and huge radius. Uh, we do have lots of antimatter stream. So we don't have to worry about not being able to take off. Alright, let's go back to designing our block. This is a nice, simple, clean one. And I like it for a change of pace. Uh, but we do need to get a pipe connected somewhere. How about here? It's actually really good. Wait, this one would be good too, though. I think I would like to connect the antimatter pipes down here, actually. That would make a lot of sense. How about... That would be six tiles. Five and seven... Oh, that's really good, actually. 
remove that and that and wait a sec I think I got confused um, because this is antimatter this is also antimatter but it's here is where we put in the particle stream so we don't really need this it would be a cleaner look, though, if we do it that way. Let's do that. Be gone. And... Close enough. Move those over a bit so it's a bit more even. Uh, we're going to need underground there. back? Did something explode in the last two hours? Uh, not really. We're doing pretty well, actually. Uh, what do we want here? Niner. Perfect. And... Oh, that's excellent, actually. Eight tiles! No! Fine, we'll do a five and a three. I guess I could do a pump and a seven. Why not? Not that it's need... Wait, what? No, I said it's eight tiles. Yeah, there's no... Wait, there's no... Glad to see everything is fine. I see flat panel research. Oh, is it moving? I don't think it was on 82%. No, it would definitely be enough plate to finish if we'd had a delivery automatically. How much do we have here? 12k, that is probably... Ooh. We're actually almost at the point where we deliver that automatically. Nice. Um, but I'm pretty sure 12k is more than enough to get some things done here. Oh wait, no, we needed um, we need we needed catalog as well, which probably means we need a lot of stuff. Nequium energy data, which means we need what? Ion canisters. What? 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 Why is this busted? Oh. Well, that's pretty easy to fix. Except this doesn't reach. Um. There wouldn't happen to be a world where I can piggyback off a connection here and it won't matter, right? This is going to be outputting the train. Negative one of what's in the train. I don't think that matters. Because we have no request threshold. And we have... Oh, no, it's going to throw off the, the precise loader. Yeah. I always like to find some way to squeeze... Uh, to get wire connections to happen without adding any extra poles or anything, if possible. But I don't think that's what's going to happen this time. How many locomotives do you need for the impact data? Uh, quite a few. 
Is this it? No. Impact data. It has a very cool um, icon that you can only really see the detail of if you're doing it on the map or something. Here it is. Train goes into wall. That's impact data. So it is one locomotive gives us 25 impact shielding data. And 1500 scrap. Have you done some more experiments with spaceships? Uh, not just yet. We've been running around collecting uh, some tier 9 modules, going to all of the... We're, we're aiming to go to every mysterious structure, and we're taking pictures. Oh, speaking of which, we're here. 1500 scrap? Yeah. This is one of those... I think this might have been the first build where I decided, oh, uh, you know what? I should probably just have trains come in and we'll do direct insertion from the machines to chests to the trains to get rid of that scrap. Because each side here, and this is with tier 3 speed modules, uh, each side here is producing 336 scrap per second when it's working. I'm doing that too, nice. Material and bioscience makes so much scrap, yeah. Um, alright, I kinda... Alright, let's just get this one done and move on to the next one. I want to get back to designing, though. What planet is this? Mireska. Mireska. Uh, where is it? I don't see it. There it is, Mareska. Ooh, nice trees. And biters are right next to the pyramid. Okay. I see how it is. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord. Uh, why don't we cheese it this time? We'll land in the water, where the biters can't hurt us. Anchor on Rareska. The ship's smaller than I realized. I could probably put it here, but I'm, I'm not... I'm not entirely keen to risk that. Let's not do that, actually. Anchor. Safety. Oh, I forgot about this. Slight problem. Can't fly inside. Luckily, we have landfill. Good idea to land in water? Yeah, someone showed me that that can be done uh, yesterday, I believe it was. Um, maybe I should get more exoskeletons. Nah, we're almost there. Can I go in from the back? I can't- whoa, okay. I walked through it, actually. Like, instantly. get an efficiency module. Maybe I should have been taking screenshots of these with the module. Just for... Just for our records. Whoops. Hi! The, uh... The height here... Adaptive armor is more than enough. Ah, 
stuck. Okay. Let's... Now that the janitor's done their thing, thank you janitor. Let's get a screenshot. And paste that in here. Save. What was this planet called again? Miresca. Back we go. Actually, why don't I... Wait, where did my jet... Oh, I have more than a stack of jetpacks. Whoopsie. In we go. Fantastic. And... Uh, that can be lasers for next time. Away we go. You should put weapon delivery cannons on your ship. I'm sure I will eventually. Uh, where are we going next? I think we've cleared out this system of artifacts. Uh, Hankerus. We've no orchard is the only thing in Hankerus. Wexivus. Deadrim. Sure. Fighter threat zero percent. Fantastic. Whoops, didn't mean to stop. And away we go. Right, back to Nalva's orbit. Um, right, so that is going to be... Particle Stream. Uh, we're going to connect these wires to... The logistic train stop output. And this one is going to be particle stream less than zero because it gives us a negative one signal when it's trying to empty the train of particle stream. And this one is antimatter stream less than zero. And then we go, oh, don't forget these signals. Uh, and then we go, name the station, particle stream. Antimatter stream. And go. Don't need the stack threshold. And then this one is already done. Cool, cool, cool. And then we just need to do our outputs. Just turn scrap into landfill? Oh no. Do you have all the resources coming in that you would ever need, or do you think you will have to make a few more outposts? Uh, it depends on the throughput rate that we go for, um, but basically I've got everything. Uh, it's just a matter of how fast it is. But we do have, like, quite fast throughput, really. Uh, core fragment. In the last hour... Uh, vanilla core fragments are at 27,000 per minute. Copper is 9.3 thousand per minute. Fidim large 7.1. Holmanite 5.5. Iridite 5,000. Uh, Vulcanite is actually 4.9, that's good. Coal core fragment 4.7. 3.1 crude oil. Uh, cryonite is only 800 and... It's almost 900, but we don't... Like, cryonite is by far the easiest to meet the demands of. Uh, and beryl is actually only 548, so maybe I'm wrong about that. 
Based on how many machines T Hacks plays, he'll need more outposts. Did you ever use the transport drones mod? Uh, are those little vehicles that you have to build roads for? I think I used that with um, Crastorio 2 with a friend. With Zura. Except those resources which get cheated out of the game, I mean deleted. I see how it is. Which one's this again? Annihilation. Annihilation data. Why do we not have a train coming here? It's so weird. We have instant data cards, but we don't have a particle stream. I think we've only got the one block making both of these. Antimatter stream is fine. So why don't we have a train picking it up? We need more particle stream though. We need more plasma stream though. Wait. This one works, right? Yeah, it does. 1476 products finished. Uh, plasma stream is waiting on chemical gel. Chemical gel is, of course, waiting on petroleum. And petroleum is... My goodness, uh, very difficult to get enough of. Haven't checked if it was fixed till today. Uh, used them for my last SE run, but at some point they bugged out in space and were just beelined everywhere. Oh no. Um, if that's the mod I'm thinking of, you can use those to make the easiest city block uh, layout of all time, and it's lovely, actually. Standard pickup station. Uh, how fast is this gonna be? Like, 20 per second, sure. Why don't we just... merge all of that over here. Actually, we don't need a splitter for this, right? It's less than half a belt for the entire thing. I see you, corner. So we can just do it this way. And then... Loader. Uh, where does this go? Here? Uh, now I don't know where it is. There we go. Stack inserters. Put spiders back in range, please. It worked, but it was just no fun, unfortunate. Pseudo Nim, thank you for the follow. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm surprised antimatter at least. Oh. Oh, it would probably help if I set a request. That that would um that that would help. Okay. Article stream. Antimatter stream. Uh, we actually barely need any throughput with either of these, so I'll just set it to only deliver when we're down to 20k. And that should be good to go already. Fantastic. It's going to be a while before we get the particle stream, though. Hey, I played Factory a few years ago. How much harder is this mod? Uh, very. Absolutely. Um, for me, like, I was already pretty good when I started, so it's not that big a deal. Um, I am known for doing fancy circuits, 
So a lot of a lot of problems that I've solved with this might be more challenging for a lot of people. What do you mean you stopped playing? How? Hey, I used to play it on and off before I streamed it. Believe it or not. I would really like to get petroleum going faster. What can I do about it? We're, we're getting... Hmm. Surely we've got some untapped oil fields. And that's not... That's before I explore the entire planet again and make the save take forever. Um, we've actually got quite a few oil fields out here. It's just the trains have to go so far for them. I'm going to need more trains. Would it be better UPS-wise if we just throw more uh, oil core fragments at it? Maybe? Where are we doing oil core fragments? Don't tell me we're still over here for oil core fragments. We are. We're still on the tier 3 prods. And tier 1 beacons. Disgusting. Did you clear Nalvis? Yes. Traded one grindy confusing game for another? Which game was that? Path of Exile. It's a decent one, though. Longest pause from Factorio I had was one month. Wow. 6,000 hours, you must really know everything there is to know about this game? Nope. I learned something new just yesterday, actually, which was... Let me see if I can remember. I don't remember what the key was, but I'll probably be able to figure it out pretty intuitively. Uh, let's do... I'm just looking for something to make a blueprint out of. It doesn't really matter what. Uh, let's say we're going to blueprint this. And we're going to go snap to grid. Uh, it turns out you can just hold shift and move around the snap to grid thing. As opposed to fiddling with these numbers, all finicky-like. I did not know that. The game is full of little things like that. That's hacks, indeed. There's new things to learn every day, pretty much. And it was only recently, um... I mean, it sounds so basic and almost obvious when you spell it out, but... It really only recently occurred to me that, okay, it does come with the caveat that you have to make sure all of the copper core fragments in a robot network are accounted for. They're, they're like, they're all in the one place that you can read by a circuit wire. But I kept, I, I've said like a million times, I wish I could both set requests and read contents of buffet, on buffer chests. Uh, well, indirectly, you sort of can, asterisk. Um, we're just subtracting what's in these chests from the robot network. That, that's it. You, you have to make sure, this only works when you can make sure that all of the copper core fragments, for example are in one place, um, unless you want to... I mean, can you imagine just circuit networking every single storage or buffer chest, uh, uh, storage or passive provider chest or whatever, in a main bus base, so that you can deduce something like that at random? That's not going to happen. Um, but for little specialized robot networks, like the ones that we use to load our ships, uh, it works very, very well. I'm not as experienced as others here, probably only like 150 hours before I started SE, so lots of things I didn't know. I played SE twice, once I gave up where I got to spaceships. Started a new game a year later. Wow. That is a lot of time. Yeah, it's a long playthrough. 
uh, I am really curious if I, like, take everything I've learned from this playthrough and then make blueprints in sandbox mode and then start a playthrough and go as fast as I can somewhat. How long would it actually take to get through? But I'm going to give it some time before I, uh, before I put that experiment into practice. Speedrun SE, yeah. Speaking of speed, we're not getting any speed on... Uh... Plasma Stream. Where is it? Over here. I could make another block for it, but we're just bottlenecked on... Plasma Stream anyway. Did I bump up the priority on this? I did. Good. Most of it's getting consumed by Ion Stream. Oh, that's right. It's probably... We're probably getting a run on Ion Stream because... I didn't fix this. Oh no. That means we're about to get a run on Ion Stream. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Maybe... Maybe it would be a good idea to... Oh, I already switched this off, actually. I've got it at less than normal priority, but that's not actually going to help, because in this block, we make Ion Stream, period. I think... Okay, I, I know what I'm going to do here. Let's fix this first, though. Uh, just a little power call as a treat. And then we know, then LTN knows what's in these chests. And we'll actually get a train summoned to pick up the scrap and secure canisters. Nyron Wolf, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. How was your stream today? Also, it just occurred to me, uh... Where the heck am I taking secure canisters? Wait. No, hold on. What am I thinking right now? This needs magnetic canisters. This needs secure canisters. Oh, this is blacklist secure canister. Okay, cool. What? Wait a sec. What? Didn't I... What was I thinking here? This was a mistake. There's... Okay, I gotta stop this. Um... Um... Constant Combinator. Constant Combinator. Secure Canister. Wait, is that a whitelist? No, it's a blacklist. So... Blacklist. Don't pick up... Don't put secure canisters in that chest. I... I'm pretty sure there's nowhere in the rail network... Uh... That we're summoning secure canisters. So why did I... I, I even, like, whitelisted secure canisters onto this belt, and this was supposed to be just scrap, but then I derped thinking I had to put both of them into the rail network here. And I'm pretty sure there's absolutely nothing that we're going to be... There's, there's nowhere that we're going to be putting secure canisters um, in the rail network. Actually, I might be summoning them to make antimatter canisters at some point, but it's fine. I just need to put a limiter on it. It's already... This is already as many secure canisters as I want to see in here. Oh, I did. Never mind, I take it back. I'm a genius. Uh, 16k, though? 
four, eight chests. Four chests, actually. Of 50 stack size. Uh, 48 times 50 times 4, 9,600. Why did I set the limit for each of these to 16,000? Okay. So we've got... We've already got 9,000... Secure canisters... Uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna risk turning that off. Okay, back to chat. How was your stream, Nyron? Getting some stuff done finally? Nice. I like coming here, you have more combinators than we do. Nice. Yours work though? Well, not when I do silly things like this. Uh lol, this is exactly what it sounds like when I look at old software work. What the hell was I doing here? Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't comment my combinators. Um, but what we're doing here, we've got a precise loader because we're loading two different things into the trains. Uh, we've got only two stack filters per cargo wagon, so we don't need an ins a combinator to deal with the remainder since uh, two divides into 40 nicely. Um, but yeah, we've got just a balanced loader here. We're using each with a negative. So each divided by negative 8 gives us the average it, as a negative of what is in the chests for each of those two resources. On the red wire, uh, the inserters receive the positive of what's in that one chest. So if it's above average um, for a certain resource, it's going to have that that item blacklisted. And that way we get a balanced load in these chests. And this combinator here, uh, just like with the average one, we're, we're reading the contents of the chests. But then we're saying, uh, for each thing that's greater than 9.6k, they have the same stack size. 9.6k should be exactly half of what can fit in these chests. So if something is above 9.6k, we're going to output... Uh, it, I think we could do either of... No. Never mind. One would not work. Uh... If something is greater than 9.6k, we're going to output that uh, number as that item. And that's definitely going to be more than the average as a negative. So what's on the green wire here is going to be positive, regardless of the average. Which means we're going to blacklist that item. We're going to stop putting secure canisters into these chests uh, once we hit 9.6k. So this is all actually good, except I have no idea, none whatsoever, how I reached the number 16,000 for this. Um, 8,000 is a full train load, which is a bit less than four chests. Yeah, I have no idea. No idea how I came to that number. Ruffle, if the code looks so weird you refuse to have it done. <laughs> Make a blueprint, add notes to the field of the blueprint, and leave it in a chest next to the bill. That's an idea. Adanaran, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, now, the other thing I wanted to do here is add our builds where we do uh, Plasma Stream and Ion. Um, first of all, we're allowing Ion Stream to suck the Plasma Stream from here, which is arguably suboptimal. 
but I think it'll be okay if I just... I, I actually need the spiders over here. I want to add a pump so that we can circuit control this. And we're going to swap the wire colors so that we don't have to add a combinator to keep those signals separate. So this is going to be a green wire. That looks weird. This is going to be a red wire now. That's going to go there. And then... Uh... Problem. I guess we can use another little add-on power pole. T-Hacks health check? Break time? Alright, let me fix this first, though. Uh, so we're gonna add a pump here. We're going to swap the wire colors. Did I leave a bit of wire here? Read this with red wire. And the rest I can copy-paste once I finish this. You'll have trouble adding a wire to a ghost? Indeed. Unfortunately. So once the spiders get here, I'm going to connect this wire to this pump. And I'm also going to connect that pump to this green wire. And we're just going to say... Uh, ion stream has to be less than plasma stream if we're going to pump ion stream into the tanks. So that'll keep it balanced. That said, I noticed that we've actually got quite a lot of plasma stream right now, which I don't understand. Because when I looked at... When I looked at our uh, particle stream production, it traced back to lack of petroleum. Maybe we're just getting a spike of it? Um, petroleum gel. I mean, not, not petroleum gel. Uh, chemical gel. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of dippy and spiky, which we see a lot of with these giant rail blocks, unless we can saturate absolutely everything all the time, which we... What? No, I forgot the wiring. I forgot to tell LTN what we've already got here. And the throughput for fluids here is actually really slow. Uh, okay. Also, I never actually connected this. That would help too. Where are our spiders? Here they are. Red wire. That's kind of funny. This thing doesn't snap to a grid, but with picker dollies it absolutely does. Red wire goes here, uh, green wire goes here, and the condition is ion stream less than plasma stream. Actually, ion stream is on the right, so let's do it this way. Ion stream is less than plasma stream. Cool. And then we should be able to just copy-paste that over here. Uh, except we need the, the pole. And the pump, actually. And then we'll send the spiders back to finish this build. We are going to be needing some... This doesn't reach, does it? Oh, this is good. 
We're going to be needing some antimatter stream. That's pretty good actually. And I don't have somewhere to send this train, so I might just We only need four. It'll go faster if I add more. I might just switch off this input for now. Do we have more trains headed here? No, only this one. Um, so I'll switch off the input combinator for this one. We'll add some storage space. And we'll just leave that for now. It's like any other ore, just varying frequency. Some fields have it as a main resource. For the Nacrotite? You can dolly the spiders too. Oh. Spidertron will not fit. Oh, yep. Yes, we can. Oh, and it's still trying to follow its master. Not today. That's hilarious. You can also pick a Dolly's the player character. If I can just find somewhere that I can point at that isn't pointing at something behind me, except the spaceship floor, then I can just spam buttons. Looks like a stop motion. Oh my god, that is funny. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Oh, we're here, by the way. At uh, Deadrim. Doesn't Deadrim have no biters? Deadrim has no biters. Uh, but I probably should take a little break as soon as this is fixed. Can you dolly him outside the wall? I don't think so. I think it'll say I won't fit. Yeah. Not even if you get it just right. I don't think you can do that. You can, however, uh, if you go fast enough and hit the right spot. Yeah. Let's get some more jetpack in here. Even more jetpack. More jetpack. Okay. Uh, if you hit the right spot and or go fast enough... Uh, you actually get into the spaceship when you shouldn't. This time it didn't happen. There's a, I, I've got a highlight clip where I pulled it off the first time. On a certain ship, I was able to get in via the back, squeezing in between some engines or something. Um, maybe if I aim for the spaceship clamp or the door. Well, the door is kind of a given, I guess. Like when you have dozens of legs. In multiplayer, you can rotate up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Just hover over them and keep pressing R or Shift R. Perfect. Okay, can I hit it? No, not this time. Uh, yeah, let's give that a miss for the moment. And spiders are almost here. Fantastic. Have I finished everything here? It's only going to be 20 per second, so let's do stack size 1 so that the loading is precise, the balance that is. And let's get our first annihilation data. Oh. And this one. I almost made that mistake on the sides. There we go. Absolutely love Piccadilly's. Great mod. Would not be without it. Okay, that is 
That's our data. Let's go... Let's go orbit this time for the screensaver. And I'll throw up some words on stream. Put the autopilot on. Run, don't walk from sponsors. And I'll be back in a few minutes. The running through walls thing on spaceship was supposedly patched. Oh, I see. All right, back soon. GG. Rip in pepperonis. One more. Oh, that wasn't a rip. Good job.
Nice soup. Just barely passed. Oh no. Alright, let's get back to some Factorio. And I will remember to remove the words on stream this time. Uh, and let's grab... What planet was it again? Dead Rim. Let's jump straight to... That's Deadwood. Jump straight to the pyramid. Cool purpley blue sand. Oh, we're in uh, screensaver mode, that's why I can't click on that. Alright. And give me back my legs, please. Thank you. Hello, friends. Uh-oh. Uh, friends, wait a moment, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. We got some weird patterns in these, uh, in the north sides of these, uh, buildings. And you murder that rock. There we go. I thought that was the hit point bar for the biter for a second there. I thought he was immortal. Alright, step outside so the janitor can do their thing. Thank you, janitor. Grab the efficiency 9. And screenshot. And this was called Dead Rim, wasn't it? Crop that. Save as dead rim. Selfie, indeed. Okay. On to the next one. Where is the next one, even? Uh, this one doesn't have one. Poscomino has some biters and a mysterious structure. Coscomino should still have lots of fuel. Fantastic. I noticed that signs around the main one aren't same at each location. Yeah, I've been screenshotting them so we can compare them more easily. Uh, I should probably post them on the Discord. Coscomino? That's where I, that's where we live. Wait, really? What is, what, what is a Coscomino? Coscomino. Private Island Fiji? Is that it? On DD slash my map. Oh, okay. Because he got <laughs> because he got kicked out of Nalvis with the giant spider things. Is that still the state of affairs in your playthrough? What was that mod called again? Like monsters or something? We don't say the end. <laughs> oh no. Big monsters. Okay. Let's build some more... Uh, some more data cards. So we've got the first of four... I don't feel like doing this one yet. Time space anomaly data. Oops. Uh, and that just leaves... This one's really easy, Hyper Lattice Data. Wait, we didn't do that already, right? That was... Nano Engineering Data required the Nano Material. Okay, good. 
lots of Nequium plate for this one. We really need to step up the throughput for that. Um, but first I want to save up a bunch of... Oh, I just realized. This one's asking for Nequium plate all the time. We're not going to get the flat solar panel 3s done necessarily. Actually, I think I've got a priority. Yeah, no, this thing has high priority, so that's fine. Also, are we actually getting close to this ship launching automatically? Oh, it's still exactly as it was before. <laughs> because we're getting Naquium in bursts? Well then. Um, what do we have here? 24 chests. That's almost a train load. 24 chests of just over 6 stacks. And here we have 16 chests of 8 stacks. Oh, that should be... That should be a full shuttle. Why don't we get a train to come and pick this up? Uh, 160 times 20... 3,200. We've got over 3,000. Are we actually going to get there? We get 4 per ingot times 1.56. 6.24 per ingot. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like, 25 ingots here? Uh, I think we are just, just, just short of having a train automatically pick this up to automatically launch our plate. And we don't have any more Aquatide up here. How many prods have I picked up? If I have 12, I would love to put them here. Uh, we have two. Never mind. I think we have a few over here. We have one Productivity 9 here, and downstairs we have... Uh, that's the wrong thing to search. Downstairs we have two, so that's three plus two is five. Hmm. Okay. Are we here already? We are... All right, Coscomino. Coscomino. Where are you? I think I missed it. There it is. Not a whole lot of biters to worry about. Alright, let's anchor. Right about here. I don't want to squish the cliffs, I just don't feel like it. Don't think we have to worry about those biters. I was taking my set of screenshots, I believe signs are random for each seed. Hmm, so is there no... Is there nothing we can figure out from them? I really only care about the prod modules as far as gaining just a few tier 9 modules goes. Alright, step outside for the janitor. Thank the janitor. And... Screenshot. Cool. 
Cross Camino. Fantastic. It's like that spider puzzle. It's random for every game. So it is a puzzle. Alright, let's go... Where are we going, actually? Well, I'd, I'd rather launch before the biters eat us. Also, I should delete surface here. So we don't have biters and or more stuff for the game to save. Uh, we're already at Wexavis. How much fuel do we have left? Just under 50%? Depends on the size of the planets over here. Anson is relatively small. It's got a mysterious structure. Uh, so does Halcyon? Kaya does not. This one's really big and has a structure. This one's huge and doesn't have a structure. Um... Can we do all of this? Nah, I, I think I'll... I think I'll do it on the next pass. What about Penthus? Did we... I'm pretty sure we went everywhere in Penthus. No, we didn't go to Tieno. And I'm pretty sure the moons never had structures, right? Alright, let's go to Tieno. Tieno. Wait, what? Tien... Tienio. Tienio. There we go. Oh right, I forgot about the spider puzzle. Did T-Hex tackle that one? I tried my best to visualize it, um, and I got... I, I got some of the early ones done that way, but couldn't really pull it off for the for the really difficult ones. I'm not sure about big wedding ring and Foenestra. Looks like puzzle. I haven't cracked it yet. Okay. Have you done any star star patter research? Star patter research. Wait, what is this? Long-range star mapping. Some distant galaxies can be identified by specific patterns of unusual stars. Results are logged to Informatron. That's a gate kept behind uh, Deep Space 2, which we're still working on. So, not just yet. Um, I think I'll tackle the the belt spaghetti for uh, for controlling this sushi next time. And I actually have gone overtime already, so let's see who we're going to raid today. Factorio, perhaps? We got Mucky, Tumbling. Who did I raid last time? I think it was Tumbling yesterday, right? How about we give someone new a go? I think I gave Mucky a raid like a day, uh, two days ago or something. Or three days ago. Speedrun attempt. Alright, let's give Sergeant Charles a wake up call. On second thought. Well, there's just lots of small ones to pick from, other than Mucky and friends. Zoom Zoom? Indeed, I really love this ship. We just designed this one at the start of the stream today. Very happy with it. This is basically, my goal was, for a player ship with our current technology, how fast can we go with a relatively small ship? Uh, the answer is pretty fast. 234. 
It looks a lot faster when you don't have 20 UPS. I meant the speed run you mentioned? Oh, that too. But the ship is nice, thank you. Alright, let's drop in on Sergeant Charles. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like, if you have any questions or anything, don't hesitate. And, uh... Stay safe. Take care, Daniel, Evil Plot, Dardano. I am Freaky. Thank you all for hanging out. Alright, let's say hello to a speedrunner.